Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie at Night. Yeah, it's a good time. It's a good time. Believe it or not, it's just me. Hey. Feels like it's been like a thousand years since I've seen you sexy folk. Yeah, man. Yeah, and it's weird because it's not actually nighttime because the the of the the daytime hours of you know the the hours. Yeah, the daylight shifting days. Yeah, of the, the dust dawn. Yeah, yeah, sun's still out. I, that's so Wrong stupid. I wish, I, dude. I, that was uh, one of the worst things ever about that. I hate that they they keep on doing that daylight savings time. They need to just stick with one fucking time. It works. Leave it alone. Yeah, I'm saying I'm okay with it in the summertime, but in wintertime, that I think that's like half the reason of of the damn uh, seasonal depression, man. Is that 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 gets dark hour earlier and you just feel wrong inside? Yeah, you know? I don't like it. I don't like it. Either. I don't it's like so it. Stupid. Sorry. By the way, everybody, that we had planned to do this last night, um, and last minute I had to change plans, so that's on me. Uh, Paolo Jazz, uh, my wife's little brother is going to the Marines today, and last night was like the last chance we got to hang out, and I felt bad because we were just sitting at dinner, and I was like. This is no way to send off somebody that you're not going to see for a couple of years. So I just didn't think for some stupid reason of planning the stream on that same night. But long story short, it's my fucking fault. I'm a little bit hungover, but I'm here to party with you. I, I drank last night. I, I drank last night and party with myself. It's yeah, okay. Did. I did. It was a good time. Oh. I watched. Uh, I was watching. I was watching some more of that uh, Catholic exorcist shit. But I was also watching today. It was really cool. Uh, it's on YouTube. Uh, they had a reunion uh, in 2021 of the Revenge of the Nerds cast, which is pretty damn cool because I've never really seen them all together. And, uh, th of course, the guy that played uh, Ogre was the same guy that played Ray Jackson in Bloodsport. So if I were in that panel, that's probably all the questions I'd be asking was about Bloodsport. Yeah. But actually, something interesting is that Robert Carradine, who played Lewis, I didn't know this, but the scene in, after they do the panty raid uh, of the pies uh, and they're all watching them undress and stuff afterwards the next morning – that it was all improvised. There's there's a scene where Lewis starts eating cereal with beer in it. Like he just came up with that on the spot. He's like, toss me a beer, and he poured real beer into cereal and fucking ate it. And I was like, now that's a man, sir. That's a man. <laughs> I seen Hardy's Hardy's did an April Fool's joke, and I made me feel really fat because my wife sent it to me, and it was like biscuits and gravy cereal, and it was Ooh. like it was a bowl of gravy and they had these tiny little biscuits in it. And I was like, Holy shit, let's go get that. And she's like, it's an April fool's joke. You fat shit. And I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. I, 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 I was going to say the only people that would really get excited about that are fans of Cypress Hill that smoked the giggle bush. Like <laughs> sausage and biscuit cereal, dude. <laughs> Cypress Hill. Insane in the membrane. Oh, cause it smells like Cypress Hill concept here. I don't admit to those people. <laughs> Hip hop anonymous. Uh, Jaeger bomb. What's up, dude? First super chat night. Thank you very much, he, sir. He says I am very disappointed in you, Mike. In the John Wick Four spoiler review, you failed to mention the DJ scene was a direct ripoff of the Warriors. Now stand in the corner and think about what you did. Even as well, I read that, I don't even know what you're talking about. I you did I, that. Didn't be like uh, copying Blair Witch when the dude was like just standing in the corner, wienering, jacking off his wiener. <laughs> I will do that, by the way. If you guys want me to, I'll go in the corner and jerk off. But. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, what did I, I may have missed something. It was a really long movie, but maybe he said, did they do the John Wick, come out and play, Mr. Boogeyman? <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know that's I a great know. scene, though. You know what? The, for the longest time, that dude that did that scene, come out and play. Did he look, I swear to God, for the longest time, I thought that was Sean Penn. It looks just like him. Like, I could see how you'd make that mistake, and I may have before as well. I just can't remember off the top of my head. Gary McDonald, I like, dude, his his little picture makes me just want to go have a deli sandwich. Those are those Cypress Hills <laughs> fans right there having that sausage biscuit cereal. Yeah, after the concert. Oh, good. Uh, it says, hey, Mike and Jay, do y'all have any idea when Scream 6 will be available to buy digitally on Apple Pay Vay in Ireland? And do you know if they'll get the special features? Mm. That good is, question. I do not believe there's a date. I could be wrong, but I do not believe there's a Scream 6 date for release. But I know that sometimes... Sometimes Apple or Amazon, depending where you buy it, will or won't have the special features. Like, because I almost never buy movies digitally, but like when I have, because they come out that way, like I've tried to get the special features on some and they weren't available. And then other times they are. So I wish I, I had no answer to either question. And it makes me feel like a failure, Gary. I'm sorry. I would say, I don't know, whatever the typical release frame is for like a movie in theater, I wouldn't like three 90 days. And then they no, short, shorten that now. So it could be even sooner. I don't know. And plus, Europe Europe has a different release schedule, I, I imagine. So I'm not sure. But yeah, I would say, I don't even... When did Scream 6 come out? Like three weeks ago? 
or two, um, four weeks ago. May or May. God damn, I'm drunk. Um, March 15th, maybe. So it's been almost a month. Yeah. Um, and then, so oh, I found it here for you, my friend. I don't know if this is for sure yours or not, but it says that the Blu-ray release date is estimated for June 2023 and available on digital HD from Amazon and iTunes, which would be Apple on April the 25th. So not long to wait, my friend. April 25th. <laughs> Mike read that from you got this covered. Don't trust it. <laughs> Since we got this covered, you got this covered. It's totally legit. You can I don't give one place, shit. Man. It doesn't matter. I will not respect them. You or we, whatever. Fuck them. Uh, I don't think there is it. We, I now I'm confused. No, I said no. It is. We got this covered. Yeah. Uh, what up, Greg? It's good to see hey, that man. sexy face for the first time in a minute. How's it going, man? He said, "What's up, dudes?" Met Christopher Nelson and Sean Clark. Okay, hang on. I gotta get my dog. She's like attacking the camera area. And... Dude, it looked like you were getting ready to open up an umbrella. <laughs> 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 I just saw the flapping fabric. <laughs> I can see. Um, Sorry, man. He said, I met Mr. Christopher Nelson and Sean Clark at the Full Moon Horror Convention today. Katie just told me, she was like, hey, Christopher Nelson's at, uh, Sir Christopher Nelson, Oscar-winning Sir Christopher Nelson's at in Nashville today. Uh -oh. uh, said, they mentioned you guys, uh, thought that was awesome. Oh, really cool. cool experience chatting with them. They mentioned us? That's badass. Good for them. Yeah, those $20 that we've been sending them over the last couple of years have really been paying dividends. <laughs> <laughs> they were probably like, uh, you know those two fucking pieces of shit that we hate and can't stand and their breath stinks and their Yeah, that's us. Funny? I like those guys. Mike and Jay, yeah, we know those guys. Those guys' whose breath smells like camel donk. We uh, we have been lucky enough to hang out with Greg, but we've never actually been able to hang out with Chris in person, which would be nice to do someday. Mm -hmm. One day on the mountaintop, Greg, will fuck in the butt. That's it. Mm -hmm. Jerry, what's up, dude? Thank you so hey, much, man. man. Really appreciate that. It says, I'd love to see a one-off Elseworld-style Halloween set in the mid-80s. Someone is running around in the classic mask. It's not said outright that it is Michael. Bracken and Loomis have to figure it out. Yeah, that would be a real. That's actually uh, that's similar to what we discussed uh, like a few months ago. Something like that. If they were ever to reboot it, I would set it in the '90s, and then and, and play off the '90s culture at the time, and, and do a whole thing revolving around that that time frame. So I, I wouldn't put it back in the '70s because that's already been done. Yeah. I would just I would update it to at least be in the '90s. I think that'd be a fucking. Bad, but the '80s would work too. Mid '80s would be cool. Yeah, I'm down. I'm down with that. Uh, and I love the Elseworlds part's my favorite part of it all because, like, hey, let's just do whatever. It doesn't have to be a continuum, it's the time yeah. and space continuum. It doesn't have to be canon, you know? Like, let's just have some fun, play with their dinghies a little bit. Another fucking thing that Warner Brothers fucked up because they were going to have Elseworlds stories. DC Black, they remember they were going to do this whole thing. Mm -hmm. I guess technically, uh, the, new, the the Pattinson Batman and Joker with Joaquin is, is technically an Elseworld type of novel but then we don't even know if james gunn's going to bring them in to the fold at some point i don't i don't know that's you the last thing i want by the way i don't want to see i love robert pattinson as batman i love the batman i thought it was a great fucking movie but the last thing i, I want is him to being a part of the dceu i just don't want yeah. i want him to be in his own contained universe no keep it sexy keep it separate mm -hmm. keep it sassy keep that's it on I point to the baker when i go get my donuts thank you jerry Andrew Gaziosa. Hey. <laughs> I'm feeling I'm gonna go salsa dancing later. That, you know what? The, the profile pic looks exactly like he would have reacted by how you enunciated his name. <laughs> Andrew Gaziosa. And he's like, shit, man. I was just gonna ask you a simple question. What the fuck? <laughs> Why you have to do that to me? <laughs> uh Mike Jay, I hope you guys are well. Looking forward to Evil Dead Rise. Mm -hmm. Salem's Lot was supposed to come out the same day, but I guess not now. Yeah, they pushed Salem's oh, Lot yeah. back again. I don't well, know what's going on with that man? That could be a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know. It could be a good thing, like they want to go back and work on it because I hope that movie does really well. Uh, but it could be a, a bad thing too because they could just be like, "We fucked up real bad," and the test audience hated it, or or the dailies were really bad. I mean, that's possible too. The thing about Salem's Lot, the original Salem's Lot is awesome. The remake with Rob Lowe that came out in the early two thousand is a hot steaming pile of dog shit on the desert nights. And so I'm really hopeful that in Salem's Lot. If the remake would well, you know, I, I I have hope because if they did it with it, was great, and I liked the new Pet Cemetery, so I think they'll be fine. But yeah, it sucks. But I'm looking forward to Evil Dead Rise too, and I don't say that lightly because I know it's going to scare the shit out of me. Dude, last night I was watching the, uh, some sh I don't know what it was on YouTube, and every fucking ad was that bitch going, uh, "Let open up now," and I, I got scared for some reason. I got more freaked out the more I saw her. It scared the shit out of me. Which one was it? Sorry, Evil Dead Rise. The dog. Evil Dead Rise. Oh, yeah. yeah I was yeah, watching, no, because no, I was at late at night and the trailer kept coming on and I was watching something and I don't even know why it was. 
that trailer specifically kept playing every fucking time. So I, yeah, I don't dude, know. They, it's gonna be good though. I, I I'm looking forward to it. I'm I, dude, I'm so psyched for it. Yeah, I watched Evil Dead the remake again today, and oh my so good. god, damn it, bits. That movie is so fucking gnarly. I think yeah. I think it goes on a little bit too long. Eventually it gets towards the end, and it's like, okay, we need to wrap it up a little bit. And but dude, man, that still gets me. I still I by the way, I've rewatched all the movies and I, I do have something to say on our Patreon commentary. If you haven't listened to it, there's a link in the description box where you can join. But on our Patreon commentary of the month, we did Evil Dead 2. And I was mm. talking all sorts of shit in that commentary, man, about how like no Evil Dead 2 is scarier than Evil Dead. It weirds yeah. me out. There's something that just creeps me out. I told out you, man, Evil Dead 1, man. I talked all this shit and I just got the movies fucking confused in my brain. I've seen it a thousand goddamn times for, for some reason. I always get those two confused, which is understandable because of, you know, but yeah, dude, evil dead. I like way better than evil dead too. No, like, yeah, I think well, it's scarier and it's just better. Well, I don't like, I don't think it's a better, I think it's scarier by far. That movie scared the shit out of me. That was one of the first mm -hmm. horror movies I remember watching at, when I got like a 10 year old or 11 year old. And I remember it was that and night of the living dead. My uncle rented those both. Uh, and it was the 1990 Savini one. And we watched them back to back, and I was fucking scared for like two weeks. That shit freaked me out and it pissed me off. That one I was dating a girl a, a, a long time ago, and I showed her Evil Dead, the original one, and she was laughing at it because she thought the effects were so corny. And then you know I said, "Fuck her, she she's a piece of shut shit." Shut up. Yeah, she was a piece. You'll of shit. You'll say that, but uh, but you know, yeah, I think Evil Dead One is is classic. I I, I just got we we um April and I watched uh Evil Dead versus uh or I'm um, Ash versus Evil Dead finished all those up like a couple of months ago. Dude, great fucking series, and I we talked dog shit on the remake. I think we we either we talked dog out, shit yeah. on it or we said something that was pretty negative. And I was like, we were, we were fucking in a bad mood, stupid in the head. We were having our period. Yeah, it's the worst uh, time when you when you're not expecting it. Yeah, and it's not good when you run a channel together because your periods synchronize, and yeah. Jay and I both get in shitty moods at the same time. That's so why we fight a lot. Like Evil Dead anymore. We fight a lot, then we kiss a lot. It just happens. Yeah. Yeah, that's happened. But I did hear the Salem Slot trailer fucking rules. Like everybody that was at CinemaCon like 76 years ago when they showed the trailer was like, oh my God, this movie looks amazing. And now they're afraid to show it. It's like mm -hmm. a guy that's been talking about how big his dick is, but then it's time to get in the bedroom. He's like, oh no, I have syphilis. And uh, uh, I can show can you, you but you won't like it. Yeah, it's really cold in here. You should turn down your AC. Max Devereaux, thanks, buddy. Says, hey guys, can you both give your top five best Van Damme movies? Oh shit, son, that's hard. Did we uh, well, we did an action uh, tier. Van Damme was up there. Uh, top five, like I, I, I off the top, it's going to be Bloodsport. Number one, I mean, with a bullet hole, it's always going to be Bloodsport. Same Uh Number two, see, I'm always torn on this. I, I like dude, fucking Kickboxer is some good shit right there. Got the Sloan Bros going mm -hmm. about doing they thing, but then you also got Lionheart, which is some good mm -hmm. shit right there too. So which one? Yeah. I mean, which one? I flip flop. So right now, I'm just going to go with Kickboxer. Kickboxer is my number two. So my number three would be Lionheart, because it has to be Lionheart now. My number four, huh. and again, I know I'm going to get shit on for this, but I have to do it. It's my number four, Time Cop. I know people don't like that movie, or, you know, Van Damme hardcore fans don't like that. I just love Time Cop. And my yeah. last and fifth would be, uh, man, yeah, yeah, you know, I got to throw it in. I just got to it's going to be Hard Target. That's fucking beautiful. Yeah, Hard Target's beautiful. Hard Target's actually going to be my number three actually but just Ooh. above lionheart so and then there'd be lionheart and then number five i'm gonna throw in some universal soldier action in Ooh, there. that's a good one just god to... damn it <laughs> i just want to uh, change change of venue i quit <laughs> uh but you can flip-flop on several of those and uh, underrated by the way is sudden death that's uh, a great ice one. hockey movie and yep. nowhere to run it's that's a good one too up. it's so weird dude because cody my brother uh mike's friend fucking hates that movie even now, and I'm like, dude, I don't know why. It was the last of the Mohegans as far as like the good big blockbuster type of movies that Van Damme was in. It was like starting to decline when Nowhere to Run came out, and it came out in like 94. The plot's stupid, but most of the, the plot lines of those kind of movies were dumb anyway. But I thought it was it had great action and it was awesome. And I mean, you got to see Van Damme, or you got yeah, you got to see Van Damme working in a barn, taking on bad guys, fucking people up on the on the farmlands. Fucking French chicks. Left yeah, and, and right. he gets like and he drives a motorcycle with the dust dude. coming behind him. Get out of here. Better than so Fire good. Down Below. That's like they, that's like their same movie. It's like Fire Down Below yeah. or Nowhere to Run. But um, yeah, Van Damme, sensitive Van Damme is always a win. And also, if you guys haven't seen it and you're looking for a later Van Damme movie that shows off his acting chops, just watch a movie called I think Bodyguard. I think is the name of it, mm. or the bouncer. It's called the bouncer. It's really good yeah. movie. Well, also by um, the way, I was going to say, uh, and I, this is one of his classic '80s films as well. Death Warrant. I didn't even like Death Warrant when I first watched it. I liked it, but it yeah. wasn't like it never. 
it's a cool title and the cover's badass. He's in that white shirt with the jeans. And I was mm. like, first off, that man would have had his asshole raped so many times in prison because he looks that yeah. damn good. But it's a cool cover. But I never, I never thought the movie like the hype wasn't that good. I mean, it didn't live up to it. Well, uh, and double. I, I'm, I'm actually shocked you didn't have double impact in your list. I wanted it in there, but I had to make room for my time cop. Yeah, it was a big surprise. Huge surprise. Yeah, huge surprise. <laughs> oh, Mr. Silk Underwear. <laughs> Austin looking like Mr. Silk Underwear himself. Says, <laughs> Which horror movie would you be completely comfortable in if you had a lightsaber? For me, Texas Chainsaw Massacre would be fun. Yeah, that's true. Oh. You could just fuck up a bunch of rednecks with some lightsabers action. You yeah. could do that. Uh, I'm going to say all of them, dude. Like I, I, I yeah, fear no man with a lightsaber. If I had to pick one horror movie and use a lightsaber, because I just want to see what would happen, because he's supposed to be indestructible, I'd take on fucking Michael, like supernatural, yeah. o o overpowered Michael from like how Curse of Michael, and I would take him on and see, I was like, bitch, survive this. <laughs> I was like, I got a fucking lightsaber. I'll cut you up like Qui Gon. You would get overconfident though. That's what I was thinking. It's like fuck it, I'd take anybody except for Freddy Krueger because then you're fucked. Because yeah, like, well, yeah, Dreamland. Yeah. But like, um, but yeah, like I mean. You think you'd be overcoming to do like I could cut you in half with this? Did you ever see the fucking prequels? Like I could cut you right in half, Darth yeah. style. But then he like kicks you and you drop it. <laughs> You're like, oh shit, dude! Imagine that. somebody needs to deep fake this or put this in on YouTube. The the uh, the the badass operating room scene in Halloween Curse of Michael Myers and you give him a lightsaber instead, oh. instead of machete, dude. That would be fucking sick. Could you imagine that a lightsaber be. like a red lightsaber going off and Michael's killing all those the doctors? That'd be crazy. That would be hot. What color lightsaber would you use? Well, you'd have you a red one, obviously. He's a goddamn Sith. No, Don't not him, no Jedi. You. If, if, you, if you were oh, a Jedi, what, what, what I, color I'd would have you to, I, be? I, I like the green one. Yeah, fuck. God damn it. I shouldn't have asked. I should have said what I wanted first. Okay, I'll, I'll take blue. <laughs> now Mike's green <laughs> with <blue>. envy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nighttime. Look at that fucking face. It looks like that's his face it. is making spaghetti. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, like a, that's like a person right. that when you, when you meet him on your Tinder date, you're like, you don't look like your picture. <laughs> someone should make that like a you know those grinders like you push meat in them and they push out the meat into like mm -hmm. uh spaghetti form yep. like someone yep. should put a jason mask and do that uh but he says law-abiding citizen unrated it was like saw it was like saw seven oh, uh, dude that movie's badass 100 percent, dude law body citizen never gets the, the credit that it's due I, I know that some people do talk favorably about it but i never hear it mentioned in like considered one of the best action movies out there i mean it it, it really does it, it, it's not only just a great action movie it's also like it's really easy to relate to the the, the bad guy and i use that in quotations uh, gerard butler because what he's doing in my opinion is is righteous fuck yeah, those assholes he killed a guy with a t-bone steak yeah and, and dude he's so methodical about it too he's like i want you to feel every bit of this like when he's operating on that dude and he's making yeah. him watch as he cuts off pieces of his body i'm like good night Double feature that with death sentence. You got yourself a night. That's some, that's Congrats. a good god. You're gonna walk out of the theater feeling like Frank Castle. You don't do oh, it yeah. though. You'll get in trouble. <laughs> Dogma. Hey, why are you flicking us off with your anime? Is that porn? It better not be. I'm gonna tell your mother. It says, hey guys, I'm very very excited to hear about Five Nights at Freddy movie coming out on October 27th this year. I think I mentioned that Jim Henson Creature Shop is making the animatronics, which mm, that's pretty that's dope cool. actually. I did not know that. Yeah. Um, they I need never. To fucking, yeah. Uh, we don't know anything about that. Um, I know. I, I only know from like, like little, like nephews and stuff like that, and like a couple of YouTube videos. I've never played the video game. Yeah, my kid was super into it. She's thirteen now, but like when she was a little bit younger, she used to play that shit all the time and loved. It. I know that Matthew Lillard is in it, which is dope. Yeah. But I also, I heard that they're doing Day and Date with Peacock again. Um, and it's like mm. that seems like a. I think Universal. <laughs> got Blumhouse tied up in a really bad business deal. Like, and they're, they're locked in maybe. with their first picture shit for like however many years. I think it's over next year, maybe. But like, I just don't like, I don't care. Cause like, I'm glad everybody can watch it at home. Who gives a fuck? It's more convenient for us. But like for Blumhouse, it feels like they got a bad deal with that. I don't know. Like five nights yeah. Freddy's could be a huge fucking movie. And the way the box office is killing it right now. I don't know. Is it, is Lillard, uh, isn't he signed up to play the security or the night security guard or something? I do not know someone in the crowd because I know that there was. Uh, I know the game revolves around the security guard and the, the animatronics coming back to life like a fucking nightmare of Chuck E. Cheese. You know, it'd be fun, dude. You know, could, I, I, Lillard's great, and I'm glad that he's getting a role in it. But I always, uh, Jim Carrey could probably pull that role off too. Jim Carrey can do anything, but I mean, he's too busy like having a giant beard and going on a mountaintop talking about the thunder <laughs> of Zeus to really come yeah. out of you know wherever <laughs> that, that, that guy is in like some dark retreat like Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. That guy's in his own retreat in his mind. 
He's always been. I think that that yeah, he's always been kind of fucking kooky, man. Um, I think like uh, it would be a fun video actually. We should at one point like do a reaction video or something like watch some Five Nights at Freddy shit and become acclimated yeah. to it and see what's going on. That could be a good ass time. Sounds but speaking good. of Jim Henson's Creature Shop, why the fuck if that's still a thing that exists and can do things, why the fuck aren't they making new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies using the Jim Henson method? Dude, that's so fucking weird that you mentioned that, dog. I'm telling you. The reason why I'm tight. saying that, the reason why I'm he's so tight. No, the reason why I'm saying that, I saw test footage uh, again on YouTube because I have no life. Apparently, I was watching YouTube again. I don't watch film; I just watch YouTube. Uh, there was a, a a test a test footage of uh, of Donatello, and it was like in the, like uh, like they they like the new gear, like the old style in the in the first movie, and it was just him moving around doing that stuff, and they had kind of touched it up, but it was all practical, and I was like, what the fuck. That's what I want to see. That was just the test footage. Where's like the full feature link movie? Like that's that's all. If they want to get turtles back to where turtles used to be with the popularity, all they got to do is go back to the basics. Give us the fucking like regular suits that they had in Teenage One, Two, and Three. The third one sucked with the way they look, but whatever. Give us the practical effects. Give us the martial arts stuff, the ninjutsu stuff. Give us all of that, and let's get busy, okay? But instead, they want to make these animated shits, and they want to do all this other shits with Michael Bay shits. And I'm tired of the shit. I want to see the old school turtles. <laughs> that's, that's, dude, that's what I've been saying. It's the dumbest fucking thing. Like they have the answer. The key is right in front of them. And they did it in the fucking eighties. So like the eighties, but they did it in the fucking eighties. Yeah. And like, I mean, why, why are you fucking, I don't care. Seth Rogen cartoon, April Neal, fucking whatever the fuck. Michael Bay. Dude, like, just give us the fucking puppet turtles. <laughs> well, man, well, you know what? I, I I think Michael Bay is is a weird one because Michael Bay. I do enjoy some of his movies. If you just want to sit back and not give a shit about the plot and just eat some popcorn and watch explosions that are really cool, because that's yeah, what Michael Bay will dudes. give you. And I, I, yeah, I enjoy it. Yeah, it's like fucking a porn star, Donald Trump, and that whole thing. It's not like I'm gonna give you a longing relationship or anything like that. But you know, it'll yeah. Give Michael you some, Bay is the Stormy Daniels of movie. Yeah, movies. it'll it'll just get you know it gets your dick wet for a little bit. But <laughs> but here's the thing at the end of the at the end of the day. Uh, they want, but people want to see the old, like just the practical stuff that they used to do. And it seems so odd that you would have a mega director like Michael Bay that really what his mind came down to is like, well, maybe we shouldn't call it Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Maybe they should be alien invaders from outer space. They wanted to take that out. I'm like, what the fuck yeah. are you doing? And see, That's what your hang up he is? He was the producer of it. I think well, I know, John but uh, he had to have some like... input. But I mean, oh, yeah. that was what you were hung up on. Not like, hey, we we're maybe using too much CGI in this. Let's just go back to the basics and see how that works. Yeah, just know. give us a fucking turtles, man. <laughs> like, exactly. yeah. Corey Feldman ain't doing shit. He's just writing in all caps on Twitter all day fucking long. No, he's got Get a music career. Back. I've seen his Good Morning America. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> It was so good. Uh, the wolf pack. Right? That yeah. shit was the most cringiest <laughs> shit I've ever seen in my life, dude. But, I mean, good. God bless him. Cause he was, like, uh, yeah. he put his heart out. He put his heart out there, man. But Jesus yeah, Christ. Go for it, man. I'm just asking you, please press the shift key on your fucking phone. Yeah. But, uh, dude, it was like, but when I was like, like when I say cringe, dude, it's like watching someone that's really drunk, try to do their ABCs. And they just <laughs> keep going. Or like, they're like, or the cops like count back from 54 to 42. And they keep going to like 21. Yeah, like, you're like, oh my god! It's like every every time you see him, you're like, you look rested. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's dark. Uh, Tim C, god hey Tim, man, this son of a bitch comes in day, comes in at night, comes in just with his with arms wide open. Yeah, he's the Scott Stapp. He's he's such a gentleman and a scholar, but in a good way. We love you, Tim. Thank you so fucking much, man. As usual, we don't deserve you. He says, "Hey guys, hope you two are doing well. If the bad weather hits you, and a prayer to the folks in the chat who were hit by it. Hey, yeah, man, that's awesome, man. Thank you for that. Nuts. Yeah, uh, we we and we uh, we fortunately have missed a lot of the bad weather, but yeah, man. Uh, yeah, definitely prayers, and and, uh, and I hope everything is going better. If you got affected by an Arkansas, that shit was gnarly." Yeah, and you know, speaking of which, which is interesting, uh, due to climate change, I actually read this. They said that it's possible in a few more that ain't years. Real. Don't talk about it. Harry. Well, now, I'm gonna talk about it a little bit. Now, I just heard the gypsies <laughs> talking about it down the street. Don't mean I buy. Uh, no. <laughs> but they said that um, due to climate shifts or changes or whatever you want to fucking call it, I don't know the imagination of your of your thoughts. That uh, it's possible that Tornado Valley, which is usually and, and historically located in the upper part or parts of Texas, Kansas, Nebraska, things like that, is going to start shifting more east. So literally Tornado Valley is moving toward the eastern uh, coast. So you're talking about like, uh, you know, Arkansas and, and places like that. Kentucky, parts of Kentucky might get in there. That's so crazy, though. It's so nuts because you oh, never wait, it just seems here? like it just started happening like these tornadoes. 
and these destructive weather patterns just started happening in the last five years. Maybe that boring motherfucker Al Gore was onto something. I don't know. Or he could have just wanted to stay relevant and be on TV. We don't know. I, we don't know because I'm not a scientist. But I'll tell you this. All I know is that I think maybe it's just we're so fucking old. We used to not pay attention to the news. And now we're yeah, like, maybe. let me turn it on Weather Channel. And yeah, I as we used calm. our aerosol hair, hair products. <laughs> <laughs> destroying the ozone yeah my afternoon's gonna be some qvc and then i'm gonna have a nice little dose of the weather channel gotta get my week planned you know yeah um but, but well, then again, I you thought, know no go ahead uh, I, just, I, I got shit fucking torn down in my backyard like we we haven't got any naders mm. in our exact areas thank god but i literally have spent like three weeks now still picking up like our trees got fucked up i have a gigantic tree <laughs> i haven't even mowed oh. on yet because there's a gigantic fucking tree just laying in my backyard that like i have to go rent the fucking chainsaw which is like a hundred bucks and i don't even know how to hundred dollars <laughs> yeah just to rent a how do you sleep chainsaw. at night it's a fucking chainsaw it's not like i'm gonna go kill people with it <laughs> I, I looked on amazon i was like i'll just get one on amazon and it was like fucking 300 dollars for like one with like a five foot cord and i was like god damn yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, might as well just fucking make one out of god like out of fucking sticks and a tomahawk and fucking chop it myself but yeah you know it's hard you know al gore i think he, he might have had a better effect on people if he had said he invented the fucking internet I think that kind of yeah. took away credibility. I was like, hey, man, you might have been going well. And then you're like, I created the internet. That'd be like me. <laughs> like, I got this really cool. I got an idea or something's really, I, I got all the evidence. But guess what? I invented duct tape. It was me. I'm responsible. And then it was stolen. <laughs> like, <laughs> was like, no, man. Yeah, I don't that's think true. That was bad tape. timing for sure. That was That's when you get in an awkward situation in a conversation with someone and you just start word vomiting. You're like, I fuck in my sleep. They're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is a Wendy's. Yeah. Um, Dude, that was a that's a direct personal thing that happened to me but i uh um it is weird like whenever something happens everybody's like don't fucking politicize it all right let's not make this political it's like I don't know, is, that, is chance, that political well yeah it's fucking like yeah it's a huge red blue fucking oh, i didn't know like, that blue people believe in the global warm but the red people don't now i i ain't like know a, about it i ain't know about it if anything shouldn't be political shouldn't it be the possibility of global warming i don't know again i'm not a scientist i hope it's not real for god's sakes but like sounds like a if, goddamn russian spy you is yeah if the world's coming to it in maybe we shouldn't make that political maybe we should all just look into it poke a finger five inside of it real quick and see what's going on I well, wait, know, but i didn't know it was political i just thought it was like yeah, hey, oh, we've yeah. been we humans have been around for a long time. We might have been fucking our atmosphere <laughs> for a while. Uh, <laughs> we might want to shift up some things. I don't know, <laughs> like pumping I, black smoke into the sky for like four hundred yeah. years. You ever Doesn't seem by like West the Virginia? awesomest thing. <laughs> no, I'm not. But I, I I don't know. I didn't know it was political. I just thought everybody was on board. That's like, oh, hey, yeah. maybe we need to reduce. Uh, <laughs> like, hey, burning a lot of gas, it might be a bad idea. <laughs> Breathing that shit in the atmosphere might not be so awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like I don't. I didn't know that. Maybe, who thought maybe we should look at these as a case by case basis and not push everything? It's like that scene in Dying Darko. She's like, now yeah. put your marker on either fear or love. It's like the blue or red. He's like, the world doesn't work that way, lady. He told well, me to forcibly insert it into my anus. I think I think what really happens is that well, I know what happens that well, now thinking about it, is like you can't really take a congressman serious when they fucking if they fly to meetings in private jets and shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's like are you guys doing or celebrities? It's like green peace. Greenpeace and like I'm gonna fly my airplane to talk about it instead of conference. <laughs> Somebody bring me a fresh lobster. Oh uh, yeah, give uh, me some Starbucks. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tim. You rule. By the way, I I meant to fucking I started emailing you back. Uh, we're having a conversation about something, and I need to do that. I'm glad you reminded me of that. Uh, nighttime with the spaghetti face. <laughs> Spike and Jay ever had to call cops for help, or have you called? Uh, had cops called on you? <laughs> I mean, we might have had the cops called on us, but we were already long gone before they got there sir what a good we're a question sneaky, dude. we're a what, sneaky ninja in the night i think uh, interesting question that is well i yeah it's actually interesting because i'm actually thinking if we've ever actually uh we took a ride in a police car one night together no did we no me and cody did because of fucking cody dude you remember i was oh. standing at your house and there was nobody home my mom was at church <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. everybody was gone it was dark and you guys had this they had this uncle that lived behind them and we're hanging out yeah, and uh, what was it like he wouldn't answer. He was gone, or he wouldn't answer. Cody saw somebody. Or Cody something? freaked out. Yeah, he, he Cody's he's got anxiety issues, and he freaked the way the fuck out. Yeah, he's like, dude, I saw somebody. We were like, really? He's like, yeah. We we're like, well, what are you gonna do? He's like, I would call the police, man. We we're like, dude, don't call the police. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, yeah, dude, do it. And Jay was like, don't Cody, don't fuck call the police. I remember call that, the police. Yeah. 
and they had i bet mom was fucking pissed dude because like the cops came out there walked around they're like i don't see anything and they're like you, you want us to take you boys to uh to your parents and i actually i didn't ride i i think cody went alone i think i stayed there with you because i don't remember the cop car ride but i think cody got in the cop car and they took him to my mom <laughs> yeah i yeah i well, i yeah i don't remember any specific moment where i remember someone called the cops on me or my uh i know the cops came i know this one time mike and cody uh had uh, they were doing their band thing uh, at the house and they were in the garage and someone called the cops on for a noise complaint yeah and the cop and came that- out there and then mom got real mad because she's like the very idea that police showed up at my home my home and the neighbors could see it i'd be ashamed if i were you boys i would just be utterly ashamed having the police in your driveway while the neighbors watch like she was very uh, that, i do remember them then that same detective the guy th- that was the same guy when i had my 45 minute anal search in my driveway mm-hmm. by the cops that pulled me over because i did uh that, that that same guy showed up he's like hey i remember you this how it goes weren't you the boys i came up here and they were playing guitar and i was like well hell man you ain't real you ain't real guitarist if you can't play kiss yeah it was my, it was my kiss. basketball coach like it yeah. was my like uh uh High school, like prep league or whatever it was called, basketball coach. He was the coolest fucking dude ever. And he was like, if you're not playing Kiss, you're not playing rock. And we're like, oh, okay. By the we're way, just, uh, stuck. just so you guys know, if I sound a little strange, it's I, I'm, I'm little, I'm not drunk or anything. It's I've, I had some dental work done. So my, uh, my, my, what the way I'm talking might sound a little strange. You sound right to me. Well, thanks, babe. I, I always try to, I always try to sound right to you. <laughs> as, as long as you can still fit my dick in your mouth, I don't care what you sound like. Well, the jaw got like, like lowered a little bit. It's going to be hard. I might bite it off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like it a little rough sometimes, but no, to answer your question, I've never actually, I have called the 911 line, but I've, it's like been like, Oh, hey, there's a fucking uh, uh, wire in the road or a power line in the road. Or like, there's these shady fucking people hanging out over here being a snitch, basically being a piece of shit. Well, I've been a Karen. Like, is what I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, whenever I see uh, people who aren't my same sin co- skin color, I basically call the police every single time. Yeah, I can read your um, Twitter files. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I don't think I've ever called the police on anybody before, and I have not had them called on me. I have met the police in nefarious circumstances, though, but never had th- someone call them. I called them I called him once, and, and that was in an actual emergency. Um, this dude, uh, this th- there was a fire in a car, and, you know, he unfortunately died. And I kicked his window out. It was it was awful, but I did call him. And the, the worst thing about when I called him is the 911 operator was so fucking rude. And I understand it's a tough job and I get it. You know, it was like two o'clock in the morning. But when I was talking to her, she's like, yeah. Or she was like, you know, not like that, but she was like that attitude. I'm like, yeah, there's this there, there's a car on fire. I think the guy's dead. You guys want to. And, she, and he, she was like, well, we can't assume that, sir. Are you a medic? I'm like, I heard him. He's dead. Shut up. <laughs> and then it was that, but that's the only time I think that was the only time, but that was actual, but not because I called it and I was like, those goddamn people over there are drinking, uh, drinking un American beer and I don't like it. They're drinking Stella's. <laughs> Fuck them. They're the German. That goddamn bud, that gay bud lot. That, nobody <laughs> drink, nobody drink no goddamn gay bud lot because it turned you gay. <laughs> By the way, I was just going to say, I'm not going to get into the whole political part of that, but the whole mm. idea, the, the bud light thing, I'm just going to say, when I saw him shoot up those cans, the first thing I thought was, I'm so poor. <laughs> I was like, dude, I would have drank that shit. Like, I know it's like piss water and people don't like it, but I was like, God damn, what a waste. Because you could have been like, I hate this fucking beer. I'm like, can I have it? Because <laughs> I'll yeah. take it because I, I want to get drunk. I don't give a fuck what's on the can. Sometimes I don't even look at the fucking can. I just drink the shit. And it's Someone goat piss anyway. Like- Most people are like, oh, Bud Light, man. God damn Bud Light. And I was like, dude, it's not like good beer. It's not. It's cheap ass beer. It's Bush Light, Bud Light. But either way, I'm not trying to politically. I just think it like... My heart went out when I saw it being shot with bullets because I was like, what a waste of beer. <laughs> that's like, beer, man. That's what Blue a waste. I was beer. like, dude, if I were there with him after he shot it, I'd be like such a bum. I'd go over there like lick the fucking like, table because I didn't have any money. <laughs> I was like, I'll just get I'll, – I'll scoop off something to a cup. Well, apparently he's such a bad fucking shot. There was a dude off to the right of the camera shooting as well, and they still missed an entire 30-pack of Bud Light with a fucking machine gun. <laughs> I thought – yeah, I was like, how do you miss that? Doesn't that shit yeah. fire like 600 like, rounds a minute or some shit? 
my name is shit shit shot <laughs> like he fucking uh I, mean, that's, I won't get into that either but i just say i've never seen somebody look so stupid <laughs> it looked fine to me it, 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 it did kind of remind me of uh it did kind of remind me of uh talladega nights if you don't chew red, chew big red then fuck you <laughs> 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 i did think of that when he was like fuck my lot and fuck whatever but i mean it is what it is but i, I just say i just thought it was like so tra- it's such a travesty because it was such a wasted amount of beer he was two oh. cases dude that's a lot of money for people that three, don't have money. Three. Yeah, three. it's like someone's like, "Do you know how stupid?" It's like, "Congratulations, you played yourself. You bought three thirty packs of Bud Light." Well, <laughs> like with, you gave with them your money just to shoot with kid rock money, it wouldn't ma- matter. Like right. it would be like a couple of you know pennies. But I mean, for us, I was like, "God damn, man!" I mean, I get it. You want to make a political statement? You got to waste the fucking beer. Can you just go shoot a tree with someone's face on it? Like I don't know. I've seen- I just I, I can't believe somebody I, like could actually get out of bed in the morning, turn on the news, and be like, "Oh, children getting shot in schools, man, that's terrible." Uh, fucking, you know, goddamn famine, uh, earthquake in Turkey killed thousands of people. They put a fucking trans person on a Bud Light. I gotta make a video about this. Well, <laughs> I, 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 well come the fuck on. I'm not getting on any of. I'm not. I'm not jumping on one. Of, but I just again, I just thought it was funny that you wasted that much beer, man. <laughs> that's a lot of fucking like beer. it just seems like you why the fuck would you do that like if it was my beer that video wouldn't end it do you see somebody running off camera to fucking goddamn luke kang kick him because yeah. i'd be like dude that's my fucking <laughs> beer i was gonna drink that shit like again that. by the way you're not gonna buy bud light and bush light like it's not quite it's not like high tier ass beer right it's fucking yeah. goat piss it's low t- i drink michael bolter which is the superior light beer it is also an anheuser bush <laughs> And I will say this, I don't give a fuck if there was a, a, a dong on here, a, a boobies. I wouldn't even look. I just drink the shit to drink it. So I feel, <laughs> they're like, hey, man, did you see the new cans? I'm like, no, man, what's it look like? It's like, you're, you Dude. got it in your hand. I'm like, no. Nah. It's like, oh, it's got a dong on it. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's like, I can't believe they're putting gay people's jizz in the beer. We're all going to get addicted. <laughs> like, uh, and by the way, fun story, like, ironically, like, literally, like, 48 hours before that happened. I I swear to fucking God, dude. I swear to God. Literally like two days before that happened, I made the switch to Bud Light before it happened from Miller Lite. Because, well, no, no, it's it's Miller Lite's probably cheaper than Bud Light is, but like I had mm. to stop drinking Miller Lite because I woke up and like it was you have said this to me a thousand times that, that Miller Lite gives you a hangover. All the time. And like there's like two people I play volleyball with that I always get buckets of beer and they're like, no, I, that shit gives me a hangover. Mm. And it never fucking clicked for the past like year. I've been waking up with just crazy hangovers. And I'm like, it's not because I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> no. No. Uh, it's because I drink gotta... at 10 o'clock in the morning and I drink all day. Does not mean anything. <laughs> it's it's got to be the beer. And I, I switched to Bud Light. No fucking hangovers. I mean, I'm hungover now, but that's because I drank an inordinate amount last night. Like, you drink Bud more Light? Than the, usually, I drank some Bud Light, but I drank a shit ton of White Claws Dude. because you, that's what they now, had. And a little, uh, another little thing for y'all. I'm telling you, if you mix the beer halfway through, and they never talk about this. No one talks about this. If I start drinking, and, and my preferred beer is the Superior Light Beer, Michelob Ultra. It's, it's, the, it's, it's the golden cup from the gods, from in my opinion. If I mix that, like if I start drinking Michelob Ultra, and then halfway through, I, I switch to Bud Light, or if I switch to any other beer, no matter what the brand, I will 100% get a hangover and maybe get sick. If you yeah. mix that shit, for whatever reason, it just gives you the hangover. But most definitely Miller Light. Always gave me a hangover. Always. Yeah. Well, Michelob Ultra, I thought about switching to that, but that that is more expensive. And it, yeah. it, it, I get hangovers from that, too. It's like a watery piss hangover I get. I wake up and I feel like watery doo-doo for yeah. some reason. Like, I don't know. Anyways, oh, yeah. Gary's been on the screen here with his Sorry there, Gary. for so long. Gary says, there is definitely someone in the next screen that's going to say they killed Dewey and Gail's boyfriend. Because like someone on YouTube said, that's two movies in a row. They, they have said a girl took on a big guy. That is correct, Gary. If you look at it, Dewey's death, um, Dewey's death in Scream Five makes no sense that that was Amber, nope. and the person who attacked Gail in Scream Six would make no sense that, that it was nope. Quinn, because that dude's like six five, you know, and yeah, gets I, fucking I, ninjaed and tossed across the room. I never got that in the Scream movies at all. Like, like when they said, "Oh, so and so killed this person," and it was like, like a big dude, and it's like a girl that is like five foot five that weighs like yeah. maybe 130 pounds and you're like charlie and i again i know it's a horror movie so there should be a suspension of of, of you know belief and while you're watching it but come the fuck on man like at least have a little bit of reality there 
like these are supposed to be like human killers. They're not exactly, they're not supernatural. So it just kind of, it, it, that turns me, I hate when they do that. Cause I'm like, yes, girls, guys, they can do whatever, you know, fine, cool. But just be like, if Jackie from fucking Roseanne can beat the fuck out of like a huge dude and kill him, that's stupid. Yeah. Okay. I just so don't that, buy that. I don't buy that. Fucking, the fucking writer of the movie literally told me that they actually go back and look at who the killer is killing who when. Like, right? Like, so they yeah. pay attention to that shit. So I'm with Gary. I think it's ultimately going to get revealed eventually that that was fucking Stu. Not other them. It was Stu. So, or just, or now, just, a, now you, or just a regular dude. No, now you agree with me on that. Now you're a Stu. I didn't, I didn't say it was Stu. I, I still, yeah. I know I'm still, I'm firmly in the camp of no way. No way. <laughs> uh, Lane Bruckner says, long time since the call live show. Miss you guys. Hey, we listen to you too. Hey, Lane. Lane. You got a badass name. Reminds me of Lane Frost. Let's I go, boys. It. I'm ready, boys. I'm ready. Dude, Lane sounds uh, like saying, a badass Navy SEAL sergeant that he's going to get you through it no matter what. Mm -hmm. Sergeant Lane said we can make it. I don't know if we can. Sergeant Lane said shut the fuck up and put your put your tampon, pull it out. Get now up that show hill. Us those sergeant titties. Lane. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay. So, by the way, we're going to hop out of the Super Chats for just a minute and get started on the tier list and then hop back in. So, feel free to Super Chat. To, to, to keep do doing your thing, uh, we're, we're going to come right back around to it, but we're going to break back and forth for those who don't give a shit about our fucking talkity talk. Nobody likes it. Yuck, yuck, don't talk back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> By the way, I was going to say, uh, I love it. I, you know, it is what it is, but I'm sure that someone's going to timestamp it. If you guys want to avoid all the bullshit, here's where it starts in the comments right. after. Yeah, they always do. But... Yeah, yeah. This, we talk a lot. We <laughs> it kind of makes it. me like I'm a little insulted, but like I get it. <laughs> Like, yeah, I if I watched you the YouTube video, two jackasses were just talking about nonsense. I'd be like, I'm here for one thing. Thank you. Yeah, Dude, my, my screen froze up for a second. I got real scared in my butt. Um, okay, so I'm gonna share my screen with you guys. We are doing the we're, we're doing a tier list for all the sequels, not all the sequels, just the part twos. That's the parameters. It's got to be yeah. part two. It's part a great two. Brad Paisley song, and I don't even like country music, but part two, it's a good song. You should Brad listen Paisley? to it at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brad Paisley's got some good songs, he's got some bangers. I like a couple. I like a couple country songs. It ain't, it ain't so bad. For some reason, when you said that in my head, I my, I went straight to I think the blues travelers are like nah, I like coffee and I like tea. <laughs> I, I like that. <laughs> I like that. I like that one song. Uh, when I said I do, I mean I love you or whatever the fuck. I like yeah. that song. Yeah, that I like that sappy ass shit. By the way, you can't really listen to a country song without the like, sappy ish usually coming out. That's true. Uh, I have, by the way, here four tiers. Best of the best. There is no choice. I have pretty sexual. I have it's fine, which is basically every woman after she sleeps with you if you do a good job. Um, because we all know it's fine. Me and I came seven times, right? Mm -hmm. You experience that as well. I usually um, experience to eat a dick when I ask them on a second date. <laughs> if I were still, if I were still dating, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. Uh, you you got to go on a second date, eat a dick. Like, all right, of course, <laughs> eat a dick. Yeah. Um. So. Let's start it off, and they got to be number two, so I got a whole bunch of them in here. I'm just going to close my eyes and feel around. We'll start with uh, old Chucky here. Child's plea tape. Oh, God, <laughs> it had to be Chucky. What a mood. Oh. I hate Chucky, dude. I really fucking do. I'm sorry, it man. It might be the best Chucky movie, though. I liked, well, to be honest, no, it's all right. I, God, it's fucking Chucky. I don't know, man. So it's the one with the stepdad who was no, fucking I, awkward and weird, right? I'm reminding yeah. myself too, like the ruler kill. That was a good scene in the school. No, there were some good death scenes in it. Yeah, I would go with for me. I'd just go with it's fine, just because I don't like. No, I, that's that exactly much. where I was going to put it. It's not on the you know eat a wiener level, but it's definitely on the it's fine level. Right, right, right. I mean, I I would I I, I wouldn't argue with someone if they were like that is pretty sexual. Like that's cool. It's just for us. Um, I do I do like that movie, but. I'm just gonna go with it's fine. And mm -hmm. let's let's start it off by pissing people off. Jay, why not? Was Cody um, Leach in the chat? <laughs> <laughs> I do, actually, this was just the plan just to fucking piss off Cody yeah. Leach. Like <laughs> fuck you, Cody. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, but no, like um, and by the way, so this does kind of have a Friday night fights element to it. If Jay and I can't agree, then we let you guys choose and we'll put it into a vote in the chat. So stay tuned for that. And Fun you can for touch, all. touch me wieners. Um Okay, so it's fine. Now let's go with Blair Witch Two: Book of Shooters. Oh man, <laughs> uh, I, you know we actually well it was it was a while ago, but we watched uh, like we did a marathon with uh, Eric Striffler from uh, pretty much uh, pretty much it, and uh, I gotta say it's a 
it's not as bad as I remember it being. It's a bad movie. Don't get me wrong. It's it's a pretty shitty movie coming from the Blair Witch Project, the original one, and yeah. then it goes to this horse shit. And so you're like, yeah. what the fuck? When you when you watch it on its own, it's not bad. Um, and there's there's some movies going on, and there's like a lesbian kiss at the fireplace, and that's a, that's yeah. always a nice time. It makes you feel it's warm horny. and fuzzy, like it's Christmas. But yeah. I still, you know, I gotta put it in the eat a dick. I gotta put it in either dick because I think that you come off of such an awesome movie like Blair Witch Project, and then you go to this horse shit. It's just too much of a slap in the face. Yeah, I, I am, I'm of the it's fine category personally, which this will be fun because this will get the audience a chance to vote. I don't mind it being in the eat a dick, but like I do think that it's a a. You're right. It's very horny. It's it's a very horny. Very movie. sexual. Um, yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot to be horny about in the movie, and it's, they're doing it's some like Wiccan this, dances. Hot. Yeah. It's, it's got some rock and roll fun shit in it, you know, like some just like cool, good times. And I just, I, I have an affinity for it because we had such a fun time watching it with Eric. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm so it's barely in its fine for me. Well, we'll see what you guys have to say. We'll table this. I'll ask you guys, put it to a vote in the chat. But I, um, but I will say, by the way, um, there is a really great scene of that. And actually Eric and I were agreeing it scared the fuck out of me. And it's scary. It still is scary. There's a part where they do the herky jerky thing. Um, and oh, I was yeah, like, if guys. they had that throughout the film, I think that film would have actually been pretty cool. But I, but again, I think it's more of the law. It, by itself, it's a decent, fine film. But you go from the found footage element that you had in the Blair Witch Project, which, which was revolutionary, and then you just go to a standard stock horror film. And it makes you wonder why they just didn't keep with the uh, the found footage element. I think they, they would have been fine. I think people would have been like, okay. Like, what if it had been like people that were searching for the the missing hikers and then they had experienced all this crazy shit you also have that one moment in the movie where he's like uh that classic line is like there ain't no goddamn blair witch <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. which is fucking awesome too so all right that is in the poll for you guys to vote on you guys will decide its fate in the meantime let's talk this fucking what is this get Michigan. out of here with this i don't want to ever see it again don't you ever come to my house you are disowned from this family <laughs> disowned get away wonder, from me linda <laughs> I, put that up, I feel like i'm the leprechaun <laughs> yeah, it, dude that's straight up eat a dick times five i hate that's that a, fucking movie that's an eat a dicker if i ever seen one man that is a straight up that is literally what? a uh, like that is uh, that is such an obvious attempt to get your ass back in the theater, playing off the name The Exorcist, and tell you the same fucking story, give you a recap of what happened with just a few scenes in there in the hospital, crying and screaming. What a terrible, shitty ass fucking. And that's I think that's like over two hours. Uh, there's no poll because YouTube is being a piece of fucking dog butt, and it keeps telling me air. Try again. So let me try again. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, if at first oh, you don't see, try, try, try again. Yeah, average two. But Come on, baby. Just I'll, I'll just keep going. Hold on, it'll get there. <laughs> uh, this better fucking work. Um, goddamn YouTube. An error occurred. Tried again. What the fuck? By the way, I will say, you know, because I've just been staring at it. The Exorcist to the Heretic, with Linda Blair's face on this on the cover. Doesn't it look like something that the Cure, an album by the Cure, would put out? <laughs> <laughs> it would just be a like a face <laughs> and black and white and a kind of a weird back uh, yeah i don't know like a spirally background yeah it dude, go, is, i don't know uh, but that's a shitty movie guys i mean I, I i i mean i'm sure there are people out in the world that enjoyed that movie but that's like i didn't watch the first like this movie is uh, literally like I'm, i didn't watch the first movie so i, I need a recap it's because i use the word dick that's why mm. it wouldn't let me do it i bet see see no. if you put eat a penis <laughs> that's that's more is that like eat more. a penis it's and that's like that's like a medical term <laughs> said try eat a penis <laughs> well if you, if you put a penis it's medical so they can't say it's I'll like try that. Being derogatory it it's like if i say hey you have your penis is small it's like i'm i'm stating a medical term to describe that's your true. wiener uh, i bet if you put wiener works. on there too because people call hot dogs wieners <laughs> it, it didn't go through. Who wiener? I'll try with a Z. Eat a penis with a Z. Or how about wiener? No, we'll I, I got a pack. I got to get a pack of wieners uh, at the store. It's live. I spelled penis with a Z. And it hey, went there up. you go. Okay. <laughs> so Exorcist Two: The Hairy Dick is definitely going to go towards Eat a Dick. That is a piece of shit. That's terrible. And movie. I am not a rapper. <laughs> That's such a bad. Yeah, that was such an awful experience. I mean, we we, we did Man versus Movie, all the Exorcists, and that one, that just took. 
immediately all the wind out of the sails. I mean, that was only second movie, too. And you're like, fuck. Usually happens by the third, but the third was a breath of fresh air. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, that second one, they literally repeated the movie. And yeah, the all, that's all it is. is. Yeah. It's like, I've seen The Exorcist. This is why I'm in line to see Exorcist 2. Yeah, it's why like, are it's you like, showing me The Exorcist? It's like some asshole that shows up late to class. I'm like, can it, can the teacher go back over the hour lo- long lecture? Because <laughs> I forgot what we were doing. I'm like, oh my god, dude! A hundred percent, dude. Uh, bing, 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 bing. How I got one. Two. I got one. Uh, well, oh, we'll do that right. one. Wait. No, well, that's fine. Two I mean, I'm already gonna put that. I'm, I'm gonna put that into the uh, the old dick category myself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it back and I'm gonna go. Are you dick? <laughs> it's going. It's I'm shooting that. Well, I mean, Halloween two is probably queer. All it does <laughs> is talk about goddamn unicorns and rainbows. I hate Fucking this movie queer. more than Kid Rock hates the gays. <laughs> <laughs> goddamn queer <laughs> ass movie right there. Bro. If I ever see the Z one, Halloween two. <laughs> goddamn Halloween two, <laughs> shit, man. I ain't never seen nothing like it. Hey, never, hey, 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 I, I tried to go see a goddamn horror movie. Guess what? I got a goddamn lecture on unicorns and motherhood. Fuck it, gay <laughs> as hell. <laughs> that movie's a fucking snowflake in a in a, in a shit storm. I seen uh, less gayness in Lamar Latrell from Revenge of the Nerds. And that's saying something. <laughs> I want to choke that movie like Latrell Spreewell coached his choked his head coach, only wishing it was a wiener because he's probably gay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm gonna choke that shit worse than Bobby not choked his own kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck me. Anyways, yeah, that's that's an EAD as as Resident Doctor Evil so lovingly called yeah, it. You done, done. Um, done. Okay, well the, the sequel I was gonna say, um, Doctor Sleep. Ooh. I don't got that one on. I'm gonna add it. That's a good idea. I like that one. Now I like that one pretty fierce. Now I'm gonna, yeah. you know, I'm gonna have to go ahead and say that now. I'm gonna put that in the pretty sexual. You know, it's not best of the best or by any stretch of the imagination, but it is pretty sexual in my opinion. I think they do a good goddamn job with that plot, and they do a good job with that acting and that cast. <laughs> I like the way you said that. I, I did. They did a good job with that acting and that cast, and I swear to God, well, I, I think that's what we need. We just need um, some straight talk in this country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, Doctor Sleep. Where'd you say? You, where'd you say you thought? It I put be? it in the pretty sexual category. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna veer to you on this one. I saw it once in the theater and liked it. I have not gone back to rewatch it, but I do remember enjoying it. So I, yeah, I well, I also love that they gave them, uh, they gave uh, Kubrick a lot of respect. Um, they were that recreation of of the Overlook was great, was awesome. I mean, the guy that played Jack Torrance wasn't obviously he's not going to be Jack Nicholson. But not only did they give respect to Kubrick, but they gave respect to Stephen King and the original material, and they yeah. they blended the two in a perfect way. And I, I thought it was great, man. I, I thought they you and McGregor knocked it out of the park as Danny. Yeah, I, I do enjoy it. You know, somewhere right now, Stephen King's like just thinking to himself, you know, whenever he hears the name Stanley Kubrick, he's like, <laughs> "Fuck that piece of shit." I'm glad you know it's weird. If, but if Stephen King's thinking that, does he think that "fuck that piece of shit" as his bank account goes to ching? Every time it's played in the fucking theater or, at, you know, someone buys it on DVD. At all times, everything that everyone doing is making money for Stephen King. You can guarantee you mm-hmm. that. But, you know, he fucking earned it. That man is a worker. That man that man puts out content like yeah. his goddamn life depends on it. So I think he got it. insulted. I don't know why, but I, I feel like when he went to Stanley Kubrick when he was on set, and I feel like Stanley Kubrick was sitting there smoking a cigarette like a French person in the 50s like this. It's like I don't want to hear your opinions, you shitty little Arthur, Arthur from the American. Shut up! I will take your f- book and I will make it something spectacular. Now disappear from me. Shit in your mouth. Are you here with coffee? Bozo. No, she's then a bozo because she's a clown. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I will say Stanley Cooper. I was like, sometimes it's like you took your job a little too seriously. You didn't make. You didn't have to make Shelley Duvall like lose her hair from stress just to get right. that fucking amazing exactly. performance. Typical fucking artist fool of himself bullshit. By the way, Iron Wolf has a good point here. That doc is fucking awesome. Oh, yeah, chance- yeah. We talked about it before. It's great. Yeah, that and the same guy, uh, Rodney Asher, maybe I want to say, or uh, uh, I don't remember his name. Uh, he did a doc about night terrors, which is scary as fuck. I remember that one, yeah. Yeah, Rodney Asher, I think it is. Uh, for well, sure. that Room 237, I, I think that, isn't that the one where they discuss like, uh, Stanley Kubrick was like even leaving hints that he faked the the, the moon landing. Um, yeah, it's fucking wild, dude. Which I don't believe that. I know, like that's like a long running conspiracy that we faked the moon landing 
and we filmed it in Arizona, but whatever. I mean, it just seems like a bunch of guys got together and drank natural light. Like, you know, they ain't, they ain't never really landed on the moon. If I go out yeah. to the desert, it looks like the same shit at, with the full moon out yes. there with the yeah. sand. I, but it's it's really interesting. It's some cool shit. And also, but it talks about the patterns that he intentionally put in. Stanley Kubrick was a genius. I I, I give him that, like 100%. But. Yeah, no, he was. I just, yeah, he's one of those people. It's like probably like a, a genius to his own detriment. She didn't say anything. I just want to say Fruit Loops is here and she's fucking awesome. Hey, Fruit Loops. We love you, right. Fruit Loops. We Good do. Show. Show. We love you too, Barb and Egg Shin and Vinny and all you motherfuckers. Yeah, Stephanie you great. and Vanessa and Jordan Cruz. And God damn, what will we be without you? A big y'all old pile the, y'all of shit the, in a Kmart parking lot. Y'all, the backstreet boys of our hearts. Mm -hmm. all y'all mm -hmm. it's true it is and i did have sex with a man uh but my point is this my point is the poll winner of blair witch 2 they would agree with you deeply uh it gets a penis that it's movie a gets big a big old penis, penis in the mouth they don't they don't appreciate being lied to when you got blair witch 2 up on the marquee <laughs> and then you go in there and expect to see some crazy witch shit in the goddamn forest with a camcorder, <laughs> and what you really get is a Hollywood fuck you. <laughs> Americans they don't go, like that. Fuck you for Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, man, don't I you, agree. But I, I was you, I, listen. You know, if Blair Witch Two was any other title, I would have enjoyed it. I, I, I think it would have been higher on the list. If Blair Witch Two was actually not the Blair Witch, and it was something else, I, I enjoyed it as a standalone movie. But it's like, yeah, the fact that they were trying to continue on the legacy of Blair Witch it was terrible. Yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah, I guess I can't argue with you folks. I just, I wanted to be nice that sweet little movie over in its butthole. Pumpkinhead two blood wings. We're we're. I guess we're starting with the shitty of the shit. Yeah, dude. Uh, I dude, for me this movie is torturous. Just, this this movie is just fine. I like you it. like it. Kind of this movie. I don't you love really it, do? but I really like it. Um, dude, I, I was gonna say send it to torturous. And not let it ever speak. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I, I fucking hate this movie. Uh, I, I tried to watch it uh, like uh, two years ago, and I fucking I thought like you know what I'm a little older now. Maybe I'll get it. I fucking listen. It was like watching Ben Stiller play Simple Jack, which <laughs> that became a murderer in the movie because of the idea of what Pumpkinhead is. And yeah, they give him some backstory and shit. But I was like, man, that is fucking stupid. I like the idea that you didn't know the identity of Pumpkinhead really at all. Uh, they didn't really need to give an origin story or why the witch was the way that she was. I thought they, they could have just made it simple. I would have been fine if they even told another story with like a Lance Hendrickson type of character and do it in that same vein. I mean, all horror movies do it, really. I mean, if you look at all the Nightmare on Elm Streets, Friday the 13th, and, and even Halloween, they really just tell the same story multiple times. I would have been fine with another Pumpkinhead movie, but instead they want to do this prequel bullshit like they were George Lucas before George Lucas decided to use special effects in Phantom of the Menace. Man, I, I got to send it down into the into the depths of penis. Into you the suck that dick. Of the you think about what you've done. The caucosphere. The, co the caucosphere. I, I just, I have no, I do, it's not the worst one because Pumpkinhead 1 and 2 are heads and tails. Well, Pumpkinhead 1 is in its own category, but Pumpkinhead 2 it's heads and tails above the third and the fourth one because they're fucking hot garbage, dudes. Like out of an attic that's hot and full of mice in New York. <laughs> uh, but Pumpkinhead 2 is, I just, I, I hated it after watching Pumpkinhead 1 and then being excited for Blood Wings and then they just fucking killed it. I don't know. I put it in the penis category. Yeah, I, I put it for me. It's in the it's fine category because I, we did, we reviewed, I think last, maybe not last Halloween because like, honest to God, once you get so old, like all the Halloween start to run together. Yeah. It was probably like five years ago we did this, but it doesn't feel like that long ago. Um, but we did a review for this, and I'd never seen it before. And you were like, there is fuck. <laughs> yeah. I probably walked yeah. in with like the right mindset, you know? Yeah. But like I watched it, and I was like, it's just fun. There's titties and there's some kills, and like pumpkin head looks good doing his business. And then like I had a good time with it. It wasn't good, but I I I I thought it was a little rock and roll. Um Rock and roll horror movie, so I enjoyed it. But I'll, we'll put that to a vote for you guys. You and I don't remember Budapest. Totally different. <laughs> hey, shout out Jeremy Renner, by the way. I, he survived. Yeah, I heard about. It. Yeah, well, you know, I I knew that he survived like a, a couple of months ago. Then they were making it like I was like, yeah, he survived the snowmobile snowmobile accident. 
Uh, good yeah, for but him. he's doing. He's he looks like himself. Like he's he's. All, I don't know what you know, but like, well, he's, you know, he's, I, he's thriving. I should say. Who I feel bad for is um, and and I hope you know the best to his family. Uh, Julian Sands, he's been yeah, missing. Uh, you know, they. It feels like the the whole country just kind of forgot about him. He's been missing since January, and now there's not much buzz over it anymore. Yeah, yeah, that shit's fucking sad, man. Like uh, they they couldn't even look for the guy because the why well, why well, I, I you know and I love you. Ju- Warlock is fucking awesome. Julian Sands is a great actor. He was a great in Arachnophobia, great in Rose Red. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like there's something going on there. I and again I I'm just speculating, so this isn't an actual fact. But I feel like he almost the fact that people were saying that he was such an experienced hiker and that he chose to go during a time when they were having this really bad winter um, storm. It almost makes me feel like it was intentional, but I'm I'm just speculating. Yeah, or like you never know, there could be foul play too. Like maybe this, this yeah. kind of shit. Like if somebody knows, yeah. Um, either way, that's fucking sad. Julian Sands does rule. I just watched Warlock like a couple months ago. That it's great. I love it. Great, yeah, yeah, I love it. Great. Yeah. Uh, Baker Review says, "What is your most underrated and overrated horror movie from 2022?" That is check the notes last year. Also, you guys need to make a fan film based after Halloween Five called. I'll let Jay say it. Cookie oh, woman. <laughs> Walking down the street. Cookie mm-hmm. woman. Michael Next doesn't the- want to meet. <laughs> um, I, um, I, the overrate under, I, I got to remember the horror movies from last year. Uh, I, I'm pulling up a list. So on that, so there was like Scream, Terrifier 2, uh, mm. Barbarian. Uh, did he say horror movies? Yeah. Okay, uh, Beast, uh, Pearl, Halloween Ends, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Smile, The Menu, Dead Stream. This seems like this was last year. Yeah, well, I, well that was 2022. Black yeah. Phone. Okay, Green well, Man. here's my okay, I got it right now. I got it perfect. Um, underrated, oh, underrated is uh, for me and my, and I know people are gonna be like, Oh, you're full of shit, and obviously, you've drank a lot, uh, which is true. I've drank quite a bit, but I'm not drunk. I would say Texas Chainsaw Massacre was underrated. I did enjoy it's that true. film. I think that people unfortunately judged it on whatever criteria they had in their minds and didn't give it a sh- fair sh- chance. I think it was a really good movie. I think they did a really good job. I actually watched that movie uh, with my wife. We watched it, and then we watched it right after it. I wanted to get the full, you know, because I wanted the initial reaction, and then I was actually interested in watching it again. I don't usually do that. And I think overrated <clears throat> for me was Black Phone. And I know that's a sacrilegious fucking thing to say. Apparently, everybody loved it. I love Ethan Hawke. I think he's an amazing actor. I think he should even play a young Dr. Loomis or a Dr. Loomis, you know, a 50-ish year old Dr. Loomis. But um, I feel like Black Phone, I was like, I've seen this shit before, but people were acting like they it was the newest, coolest thing that's never been done. It was like a, a TikTok fad. And I was like, bitch, China's spying on us. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh but i, Kid I, Rock I told me <laughs> yeah well he did in a magic eight ball we communicate uh, but i mean but i was like it was overrated as fuck like the the, the black phone movie I, I watched it and i was expecting something to really be different or cool kind of like the house that jack built and it was like what the, this isn't like uh, it, it's a standard kind of standard for the fair type of movie but that's that's my opinion I, I could go with the same exact thing, man. Honestly, I agree. Like, I think I think Black Phone, I think I liked it more than you did, but I do think it was overrated. It was overblown. They showed everything in the trailers, which was a big bummer. All of Ethan Hawke's cool lines were in the trailers. So uh, I could easily go Black Phone with overrated, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre is definitely underrated. Also underrated was Beast. So just to be a little bit different, Beast. I'll say Beast and the Black Phone. And I could also say Nope's a little bit overrated, too. Like, I, I liked it fine. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, over. I yeah. would say that's 100% overrated. Yeah, I just it, it was fine. It was a good movie, but people acting like it it was it was The Shining. Uh, it's a little bit, you know. Yeah, uh, a little crazy. Like really, I mean, to be honest, like um, Get Out was an awesome movie. That was one hundred percent. It was a great movie. But then a- ever since that movie got such high praise, it's like you guys, not you guys, but it, it's like the media made him like the darling, and like everything he does is like somehow perfect. And it's not. It's kind of stupid yeah. to think that way. Yeah, and I, and I like it. Like, it works good for horror because, like, an original horror director and someone who was doing comedy first was just pretty yeah. fucking cool, too. And I like Jordan Peele as a person a whole lot. But, like, yeah, there it's it's overblown a little bit. But it's good for horror in the long run because now original horror directors, because he kind of walks so they could run. Not to say he's the first person to do that, but he's, you know, such a big name now. They're getting those, and we're getting more original horror because of what Jordan Peele did. So that's awesome. But I do think... 
uh, us was overrated and get out like it turns into a giant jellyfish tent camp at the end. I don't know what was going on. Not there. get out. You mean nope? Yeah, yeah. Uh, or um, yeah, nope. But yeah. like I, at the same time, it was like the movie, like the way he makes the movies is fucking awesome. Mm. Like it's it's not overrated because of him, because the way he makes it and directs it, it's so fucking cool. It's got this M Night Shyamalan feel to it. It's it's really fun. But the story is just kind of lacking. You know. Well, what I mean? you know, like was it was it last year or the year before for Candyman? Because I feel like that was overrated a little bit too. <clears throat> uh, I I like that one a lot. He, no, I liked it, but I, I but I don't think it was like the next you know you know oncoming of Tony Todd. Like I I feel like Candyman the original uh, Tony Todd movie was per, was great. I don't think it yeah. touched that one. I think Candyman got weird hate because of the political stuff, like, and they and that's to their own doing a little bit because they. Didn't well, yeah, like, that you know, in, but we've like, talked about that before. Just keep that shit out of your movie. Like, I don't know why you have to add in shit that doesn't really advance the plot. If you're just gonna have it to have it, I mean, it's stupid. But yeah, I. But I mean, we're as we're a movie, but just, eggs. <laughs> well, well, just as a movie though, I just feel like comparing that to the original Candyman, the Tony Todd Candyman was fucking. Yeah. It, it's in another level. Like it's Dude, just I another hope- level. I hope I hope Jordan Jordan Peele's next movie fucking kills. Like I hope it's amazing and he can keep it up. Like for sure. Well, I feel uh, like yeah. I, I feel like people are uh, you know do to kind of treat him with um, kid gloves versus like M Night Shyamalan because unfortunately M Night Shyamalan gets like treated like shit every mm-hmm. time the movie doesn't do well or it doesn't have a twist ending that everyone's expecting. Like see M Night's full of shit. M Night's overrated. M Night's piece of shit. Whatever. And then it's like Jordan Peele does something like that's mediocre as fuck, and people are like. That's such a man. Now that is a man. You see? I'm like, what the fuck <laughs> yeah. are you talking about? It's the same I, shit. I have made the exact same comparison. If M. Night Shyamalan directed Nope, it would have gotten ripped the fuck apart. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt about it. And you know what I got called for that, Jay? I got called racist. And I'm like, you oh, are racist. You know you Twitter, Night, piece of shit. Have you seen M. Night Shyamalan? How is that? That is literally, that cannot be racist. Isn't he Indian? Isn't he fucking Indian? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I don't know, but I know he's a person of color. Well, his last so name Shalaman. I'm assuming he's Indian. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't. I'm not even going to go. That's that not way. racist to say, know. by the way. If but I don't like, fucking know, I don't fucking, fucking know. I didn't say goddamn. Um, I don't know who's a white director. Zach, uh, Zach um, Snyder. Yeah, I didn't say Zack Snyder would have been ripped apart for making, but I mean, actually, he would have been. If he, he would have been. <laughs> <been. laughs> been ripped apart. You're such a racist, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I root for no, you can say like Steven Spielberg or James Cameron or or David yeah, Fincher. Yeah, no, you can Those root for someone and still think they're overrated. Uh, I fucking sure. hate white directors, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I will see. I was like, uh, uh, um, uh, it's, like, it's like Omar Epps and Scream Two. He's like, can we can we have a black movie? All black cast, all black. <laughs> like, can we please? Like, um, yeah, Diaz, yeah. thank you so much. <laughs> Then you, Says, you have hey Black there. Panther. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, fellas. Stopping in to say, have a great show. Going to catch the replay. Back to finishing Empire Records. Happy Rex. It is Ooh. fucking Rex Manning Day, man. God hey, damn it. Cool. I, I was woken up with that fucking news this morning. That's like my top 10 favorite movies of all time. And I always want to do something for Rex Manning Day. And I always fucking forget. But we mustn't dwell. Not today. Not on Rex Manning Day. You know what's crazy is um, Rex Manning, uh, the the actor that plays Rex Manning uh, in the movie. I I I actually really liked him a lot in Grease too. Was he in Grease too? Yeah, he was the main guy. He was the main dude. He was like Sandy's. He was the Sandy. He was Sandy's cousin. I just remember the the best things in life. I I I actually to be honest, I I I I liked Grease too. It it got a lot of hate because it wasn't Grease. The original Grease with John Travolta, but do Grease too is actually I kind of enjoyed it. But yeah, Rex Manning Day, Happy Rex Manning Day. Let's all get yeah. drunk and yeah. take our clothes off at the record oh. store. That's my fucking. That's my Empire Records tattoo. It's an alien eating a piece of pizza, and it's oh. the man saving the empire. I actually, my next piece is going to be a full back piece that's literally just going to be Rex Manning, <laughs> just on my whole back like the Ben Affleck dragon. That sounds tattoo. like something that the Jackass crew would dare Steve-O to do when he got to get his whole back tattooed with his face. <laughs> did you that- feel that seat? Uh, when he's in the uh, he's in the thing, she's like, "You were you were my favorite singer in high school." He's like, "Who's your favorite singer now?" <laughs> that's that's me and you at the convention circuit. <laughs> so I was like, "Hey, you're yeah. my favorite YouTuber." Like, who's your favorite YouTuber now? <laughs> oh yeah, they say you used to be my favorite. It does. It all. Yeah. It always does strike you a certain way when it's like you used to be my favorite. Like, well, what do we do? <laughs> How do we lose your support, sir? Oh, uh, why don't you all just fade away? 
God, I fucking love that movie so much. I'm going to watch it tonight, maybe, if I don't get too drunk doing this show. Uh, thanks so much, J.D. We fucking love you. And thanks for bringing that to our attention, because it's very, very important. All right, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do one more. I got to go pee real bad. Okay. Okay. Uh, Norris. Shock. Ah, Cloud. Says, what's... <laughs> God, I'm going to be sick of that. Uh, what's up, my dudes? I still like Halloween 2 as the best sequel, even though the Ooh. pacing is, is not good. You're right about that. And old Baghead Jason may be the best sequel. I hope you all have a great Easter. Jay, what's Thank your you, thoughts man. on the new Star Wars news? Yeah, dude, there's a bunch of fucking Star Wars news coming out. I, uh, well, I mean, to be honest with you, I'm not sure. Refresh me memory. Oh, fuck, I don't know. Because it's I all like, like it, well, I, I've, I've heard quite a bit. I mean, are, which specific thing are you talking about? Because there's been, uh, if you're talking about the delay in the new Star Wars movie, if you're talking about the layoffs that they've done, no, dude, certain... they just had like yesterday was Star Wars Day, and they announced like twenty fucking new movies. Like they, well, well, I know that I know that they delayed. Um, they had a Star Wars, like the new uh, Star Wars movie, um, after Rise of Skywalker. I thought that was delayed. Mandalorian season three is apparently getting shit on in the ratings. I don't know. I mean, that's what I heard. It's doing very, very bad. Um, I don't know what it is, but uh, I think. Well, here's okay, the thing: so Somebody, James well, Mangold's he, directing one. Um, yeah. and it's going to take place with all new characters, and it's one of those things you talk about, like uh, the like old Republic, the, it, like, like I don't thousands know Republic, of years before it, Star Wars. It's, yeah, it's all new, and they're doing a bunch of shit that Star Wars fans are apparently pretty fucking pumped about. Well, that's what. Okay, well, so I'm I'm sorry, I'm probably not familiar enough to like really comment on, on your question, but we really do thank you for um for the question. But uh, I will say uh, we had talked about before uh, mentioning that um. The, the way to move forward with Star Wars, in my opinion, I feel like you've already milked the shit out of that titty of the cow for Luke Skywalker and, and whatnot. You need to move somewhere else. If you go back thousands of years in the Star Wars universe, I actually watched um, someone today or yesterday on, on YouTube, and I'm not going to name the names because I don't like doing that, but they were like, oh, the Star Wars universe is dead. It's dead. You need to go somewhere else. I was like, not really at all. Uh, thousands of years before Luke Skywalker, thousands of years before Darth Vader, I think there's a lot of great stories to tell there. I mean, the Jedi Civil War, the Sith, uh, the Sith Civil War. There's um, Darth Bane. There's all sorts of great, awesome characters and, and and stories to tell. So if they're going in that direction, I fully support that. I think that's an awesome idea, and I feel like that would give some uh, much needed uh, blood to the Star Wars franchise. Because let's be honest, the Star Wars franchise at this point has been drowning. Um, it's been you know the same old same old shit and sometimes it's just there there's there's stories that are told that are like all right well you're changing the background you're changing what happened to fit this and fit that yeah let's just go back let's go back thousands of years and just because i mean how cool to 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 understand how the jedi split like who was the first jedi to understand and 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 and, and figure out the dark side of the force i want to see that shit that's cool as fuck i think that would be amazing you, you're thinking of these Jedi that that for thousands of years or whatnot have been like basically monks and living by the light side. Who was the one guy like, man, I want to get my dick wet a little bit. What's on the dark side of this shit? And he goes to the library and he starts reading bad shit. And then he yeah, like recruits a, a gang of bad guys. Do I want to see all that stuff? But yeah, forgive me. I don't I don't know um, any of the particular I, mean, I don't know what news you're talking about to, to answer I, your question fairly. I only know because I kept trying to get like news about other stuff and everybody was just like star wars star wars and i was like shut up geeks <laughs> and i hit my computer and then mike I was like ogre from I revenge did, of the I... <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm uh, gonna go pee but I, i'll be back yeah all right um gary mickey down who says mike and jay did you ever finish chuck season two what do you think season three will be good i know jay has not um and i didn't either to be honest with you, I just want to say that I think the show's great. I love Devin Sawa. I think they're doing a good, good enough job with it. It's just like in today's world, there's like so many movies and stuff and, and stuff to keep up with. I wanted to fucking get into it and like because it's cool and it's a big slash universe and and there's so many people that care about it. But like, I just I don't know, man. I just, just like when as soon as we started doing the recaps and nobody was watching them, I was like, well do i care either and i had to sit in a dark room for three days and i ate one meal a day and um i was deciding a whether or not to play football again 
And B, am I going to continue to watch the show? And I just, what happened was I kind of just forgot it existed for a little while. So no, I've not finished Chucky season two, but that's not a knock on it. I think it's fine. I think they're doing a good job with the show. Just never, I, you know, you watch certain stuff for me. It's like Ted Lasso shrinking fucking love those shows so fucking much. Um, there's certain shows that grab you like emotionally that you want to watch that you need to watch. And it just wasn't one of those things for me. So yeah, I wish I, I wish I had a better answer than that. Um, but I hope, I hope it ended well. And I hope season three is fucking rad. I got to catch up on the last of us too. misfit Thor. He's got the fucking icon and everything. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's like you're driving a Mustang listening to, uh, you ain't seen nothing yet. Dun, dun, right down. The main street of your local town it says greetings from the bluegrass state been playing resident evil 4 remake so essentially it feels like john wick and the evil dead fun times so uh that i've heard a lot of people talk about that and i gave up on resident evil a while back because i was just like i'm too stupid <laughs> i'm too drunk to taste this chicken uh but I, i'm glad that because that was a really popular one i remember when it came out so i'm glad people are having so much fun with it and uh yeah dude you ever watch a movie like that though like you watch john wick or something and you're like man i can't wait to fucking get home and play goddamn golden eye or whatever like you you or halo or whatever it is like john wick and a movie like that really gets you pumped up to play shooter games i don't know why specifically halo swat when you watch john wick you want to play halo swat till the fucking cows come home man do some headshots some no scopes just have a great goddamn time uh god i'm so excited for evil dead it makes me horny in my cha-chas angelico and, and angelo sorry i have a drinking problem says um hey mike and jay could you guys do loomis versus patrick bateman on who has the better morning routine thanks guys all right well when jay comes back we will do that that's funny um dallas cervantes hey it's good to see you dude says if you guys seen the barbie trailer i'm excited i am willing to bet jay has not seen it i haven't seen it either i love margo roby um and i love ron gosling and you know my kid loves fucking barbie so in my mind, for some weird reason, it's like a joke version of Wolf of Wall Street, and they're going to be doing a bunch of drugs and having a bunch of sex, but I'm sure that's not what's going on in the movie, so I'm, I'm likely to be disappointed. But at the end of the day, I do get to take my kids to a movie other than, like, fucking Ant-Man Quantumania. So it's going to be so weird that it'll at least be interesting in that respect. Is is Do they play the Barbie Girl song in the movie? That's my biggest fucking question. Dallas. My biggest fucking question. Child of the Cone says, yo, what's good, fellas? What's good with you? Says, I was born in the great year of 1989. Ah, so you are four years younger than me. I'm old as fuck. Says, how would you rank these action films? Favorites, least? I will wait for Jay on that one because that is a question I'm sure you wanted to have Jay answer as well. Um, if it looks like I'm drinking out of a sock, it kind of does, doesn't it? Like, it's just weird fucking looking. It's, it's a koozie. With a little hoodie on it. That's Minnesota. My wife went to Minnesota and brought me this back. Also herpes. But that's neither here nor there. You can't blame a person for doing what they want to do on business trips. She has her headphones in, so she didn't hear that. Oh, God damn it. She did hear it. Fuck. <laughs> oh, you scared me, actually. Like, you rose from the fucking dead. Holy God. Oh, that was horrible. Michael Parton. I have herpes. Michael Parton says, since Five Nights at Freddy's is going to be day and date on Peacock, I wonder if they're going to do the same for The Exorcist. Yes, my friend, they are. I can confirm. They said, I believe, when it came out, that the first movie would be day and date to Peacock, and the several after that, they don't know for sure. I want to say that's what I read. Uh, you can go back and fact check me on that, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's also day and date. I, I mean, I'm just telling you, I think I, they'll say what they say. I think Blumhouse got dicked over in a deal during... Uh, during the pandemic and everything going on and universal's like we're gonna suck these motherfuckers dry did someone you know say dick saying? and suck yeah they did someone's mouth is salvating <laughs> i almost thought it out of my nose um so a uh, two that you missed that i wanted to get your uh take on angelo the cisco that's kid. a good looking kid right there he looks like the cisco kid i believe it <laughs> look like jesse james but, I mean, that's a good looking kid right there not like not in a gay way <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, like, good looking guy. He said, Could you do uh, Loomis versus Patrick Bateman on who has the better morning routine? 
Oh, uh, um, that's a weird one. Like, I don't know. How you, you start do this that. time because I got to think about my Patrick Bateman. I forgot how to do that. I did it oh, once in '79. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, better morning workout routine. I yeah, guess. just a workout. I, I, I better morning. Okay, so uh, let's see. Um, alarm clock goes off at 5:30 a.m. I wake up. I take a quick swig of Jack Daniel, and I realize it's another day dealing with that fruitcake, Michael. And his obsession with his sister's titties. And then I look at my notes. Realize I've got to deal with him today. And then I go vomit. For about 30 minutes in the toilet. <laughs> After where I take my shower. Wash the poop off my anus. Brush my teeth. And then make a few phone calls. Is Michael still locked up? Yes, he is. Good. And then I drink some coffee. Black. It's not racist. Shut up. <laughs> then I get in my Oldsmobile. I take it down to the BP gas station. I fill it up. I use coupons. Don't get a lot of money doing what I do. Drive over to the asylum. Go to my office and say, how do I poison Michael's lunch today without getting caught? <laughs> That's it. Well, doctor, I think I've noticed a, a, a missing part of your regimen. You see, there's no workout. There's no green smoothie. <laughs> and Paul, if I can call you that, uh, I like to sit down in the morning with a That's nice high. yogurt parfait. Mm. Yes, you see, uh, yogurt has, but it's dairy free. It's dairy free because I'm one with the environment. You understand? And then I do about a thousand sit-ups. I'm up to a thousand now, and uh, I put on my face routine, but I make sure that there's no alcohol because alcohol dries out your skin, and you don't want that. And afterwards, I eat some ravioli for breakfast because so healthy. I was at Dorsey last night, and mm. Bob had leftovers. <laughs> he never finishes his meals. It's insane. It's a whole thing. But you wouldn't know. Because I thought you've never been to Dorsia. Sounds like a gay club. Uh, I want to stab you to death and play in your blood. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, fuck, man. Dude, I, that, that you know, you know, literally, uh, what I, I think that would be, you know, to be honest, I think we missed a boat there uh, because it would have been really funny if, when we were doing the interview inter interviews with Loomis. Or whatever. It'd been funny if Bateman was hosting, and Loomis uh, had been yeah. one of the guests, because it would have been like, Loomis interview Bateman at some point. Maybe I think thing. that would have been funny because if you said, <laughs> said the green smoothie, I was going to let you do your thing, so I didn't want to interrupt. But it's like a green smoothie. It sounds like it comes out of your butthole. <laughs> we made a lot of cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kale. It's kale. Oh, yeah, that's a good one, man. Uh, that was that was yeah. That if you guys have not seen that video. You got to look that up because we actually like we went all out for that one. I still have blood on my ceiling, like in my living room. Yeah, that. that was fun. So, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. Piece of shit. Remember back in the college <laughs> days when we blew all those dudes in a row? Wasn't a big deal. Oh, it was just like an initiation. It wasn't gay or anything. But I'd have my stomach pumped like nine times from all the cum. There Man. actually was a case where somebody. Never mind. We're not it was Rod Stewart, by the way. You said it was somebody else. It yeah, was, I know. And it's only correct. Like, it was actually Rod Stewart. I was like, oh, yeah, people so. were very upset. They're like, I know, but I was, I was like, yeah, dude, I read it on the fucking internet, so it had to be true, right? I'm sorry it, got, it lied to me. Uh, hey, what the poll say, by the way? Oh, I, let me forget I put that up there with the conjuring, too. Um, what did the poll say? What was the question? So, as oh my god, pumpkin head, too. The question was, it's fine or eat a pee pee, dude. We're landlocked. Jay said oh. EPP. I said it's fine. It is 50% to 50% right God now. God so damn. We'll revisit that. That's crazy. Dude, it's, like, it's like Final Four time right here. It's like tournament oh, time, so baby. All right. We're going to go to the championship. <laughs> What's going to happen? I don't know. That's well, crazy. All right. Should we? I don't know. What uh, What do we do? I, we have no I'll, contingency. I'll just let it sit there for a minute and see if it changes <laughs> uh, and stuff. It's like, uh, why don't you guys I, revote? <laughs> revote till you get it right. <laughs> Scream to Scream well, to. Uh, I, it's the best of the best, in my opinion. Jay. I know you were uh, gonna go there. I knew you were. Yeah, I knew you it's were. Great okay, one. I know. It's a great one. I won't fuck it. <laughs> I do. I, you know, for me, it was pretty sexual. 
Uh, I would not put it in the best of the best, but I'm not a huge Scream fan, to be honest with you. And Mike's obviously a proven racist, and he doesn't like Jada Pinkett Smith, so of course he's going to put it at best of the best yeah. because she I dies. Yeah. Uh, so I will, I will give it to Mike <laughs> and his racial tendencies. <laughs> But I am no part uh, racist. Uh, right. But I'm going to you. No, I, but I'm, I'm going to concede best of the best because I I could flip it there. But uh, to be honest, it's not really a fair question because I'm not like a huge Scream fan. So well, it's fine. So okay. So by the way, a Pumpkinhead two goes eat a PP. It went fifty one percent, forty nine percent eat a PP. So we can we can throw up a vote on this one just just to see where it goes there. But I, I do appreciate your consideration in that matter. Mm -hmm. I will say that um, You're welcome. You're welcome. I am gay and racist, and I just <laughs> dude. Someone's gonna clip you saying that. It's gonna be awful. It's like you and, should. And be... They do. I'll be like, "Well, you got a problem with me being uh, gay, dog?" No, yeah. Mike's, Mike's gonna use the gay shield as a way to get away from being racist. <laughs> He's gonna be the Captain America of gay, so he can be racist behind the shield. <laughs> uh, no, but you know, to be honest with you, I, I, I wouldn't even put it to it, but I'll just give it to you because I. I would put it's it pretty late. sexual, but I'd be fine on best of the best. It's too late to apologize. Okay. It's in the poll. Oh. Um, <laughs> aliens. That's got to be best. Of best of the best. I mean, there's there's no discussion here. Get away from her, you bitch. That's a fucking easy one. It's game over, man. Like, a right away. I mean, there's so many quotable lines for that movie. It's so badass. Sigourney Weaver showcases that you can be sexy and awesome at the same mm -hmm. time in that film. She's also nurturing and, and caring to Newt. Uh, it's it's got Newt Gingrich. Michael... I didn't know he's in this movie. Yes, he was. That old Newt. fuck. <laughs> that old fuck still alive, even in another universe. Uh, but Newt <laughs> is, uh, you know, the the caring aspect of her is great. Um, you got Michael Bean playing an awesome role. Bill Paxton, one of the best character actors ever in that film. That movie just works on so many levels, and you can watch it today, and it holds up. Like it, it like it really is one of those movies that it was done so well with the special effects and the story that it's like Terminator Two. Like it yeah. just holds up. And it's great. Yeah. Can't argue that one. Everything you said was 100% true. And I agree with it. How about old fucking Saw 2 right here with the two fingers? Imagine those <laughs> yeah. two things going in your butt. Yeah. Yeah. That's That looks like a fucking Vegas hooker at, on a Sunday after what she's been through on Friday and Saturday. Dude, I was at volleyball the other night talking to people about butt stuff. And I'm like, you ever get those girls, though, that they have those those... The really long fingernails, like they get their oh, nails yeah. done and shit. And it's like, do you think yeah. that they go home and try to finger their boyfriend's butt? <laughs> uh, <laughs> they would hurt. I don't know about fingering, finger nailing, because they imagine, wouldn't even the nail uh, it, long enough. You wouldn't even have to put your finger in there. Imagine if it snapped off and got lodged up there, dude. You got to go. Dude, to the what I always thing. thought, like, what's crazy, and what I've always thought, like, well, how is that? Like, girls with like really long fingernails, if they're a lesbian, and they finger their girl. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Of course like, you do. Unless you're, well, I mean, we all a racist. America thinks about this. <laughs> That's not, I don't care what color they were. I always think about this. But those also look like broken. And I, I've seen them. Okay, I don't know why I focus on this in strip clubs. It seems like these bitches have these fucking broken ass nails. Yeah, I need no. a complete package for the fantasy if I'm going to look at, at the strip. Okay, mm. it needs a complete package. If they're broken ass, dirty ass, meth fingers. That look like they they pick their butt like and this? smell it. Yeah, like this. You got yeah, yeah, like yeah. That's that's yeah. true. You got a point there. Uh, I don't really pay attention much. Uh, I know, but I'm weird like that. But, yeah, but hey, I mean, you always like a woman with small hands, you know, for obvious reasons. Yeah, it makes your wiener look big. I mean, that's exactly. I mean, you most it. American men will think the same. Um, where would you rank Saw 2, though? Speaking of movies, I mean, okay, but I'm, I'm different. Yeah, I know that went on somewhere else, and we were like literally having a, a spiritual talk. Well, I, I, I people be, left that will never ever come and back. No, they're never coming back. Uh, never. I will, I, I like this movie to be honest with you. I kind of did dig it. I, I think it was in, in the same type of it was a good spiritual successor to Saw 1. It was never going to live up to Saw 1. Saw 1 was like a fresh breath of air that had come out of nowhere so it was never going to live up to it but i i feel like it did a good job uh for what it what it did i i'm i put it at it's fine um i i, I am i'm good with it's fine i actually would uh, i'd imagine a pretty sexual i i think that the my guess would be that the audience would say pretty sexual this because I'm, 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 I'm good with that i'm good with that i'm good with that um, i can go there too yeah, like it, it's 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 
But I'm going to be honest with you, Jay. I thought you I'm didn't gonna... like this movie. That's why I remember you hating this no, movie. No, that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I fucking, like, it's not bad, but I hate it. Because, like, so it, it has some great death scenes in it. Like, when it's getting thrown into a, a whole thing of hypodermic needles. I haven't that's done that fucking, since ooh, I, I went to sixth grade in eastern Kentucky. But, like, I when <laughs> hung fucking, out with Scott Stapp. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I hate the fucking character. That guy who's running around the whole time. Like, oh, I got to the shirt on. Fuck. And he's like, oh, the tough that, guy. Yeah. Yeah. He was so annoying and over the top to me. I didn't think he was that great. So I'm going to agree with you on it's just fine for me. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, again, I can, I can flip it to it pretty sexual because, I mean, to be honest, um, the, the Saul sequels are, are weird, man. Like, you'll get like a really good sequel and then a sequel after that and the sequel after that will fucking suck balls and then they'll yeah. turn it around and make an awesome movie like by like the sixth one and you're like what yeah. the fuck expectations it's weird. are crazy uh but like i think we both agree it could be pretty sexual but i think for us it's just like a personal taste thing it's more of a just mm -hmm. fine mm -hmm. it's fine mm -hmm. it'll be all right um child of the corn said yo fellas what's good i was born in the great year of 1989 good Woo! year yeah. How would you rank these action favorite to least? Indiana mm. Jones, The Last Crusade, Roadhouse, Lead the Weapon 2, Kickboxer, Batman. Ooh, man, that's a fucking good one. That's a loaded ass <laughs> question, and you ain't telling nobody you got a gun. Um, <laughs> I mean, you're you're probably got a CDC. Uh, I will say, um, dude, that's fucking such a good one. All right, just looking at your list, I'm gonna go with um, I'm gonna go with Batman. It was it was it was the new generation of Batman. It was literally what set the precedent for all the other Batmans that we have now that followed. Um, it was it was mind blowing. Uh, from second Indiana Jones, The Last Crusade, Sean Connery, Harrison Ford played off each other perfectly. It was an awesome fucking movie. It was the best Indiana Jones in my opinion. It overshadowed um, Temple of Doom because I think Temple of Doom was overrated, but it's still a decent film. Overrated though. Um, and then Kickboxer. Lethal Weapon 2, then Roadhouse. I I will go in uh, um, the exact order that you put those in. Batman, Kickboxer, Lethal Weapon 2. I fucking love Lethal Weapon 2. I want to, just to prove my love of the Lethal Weapon movies, put it number one, but I'm just being honest with you here. That's hard to compete with. But Batman, then Kickboxer, then Lethal Weapon 2, then Roadhouse, then Indiana Jones. That's exactly how I'd rank them. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. I will. Well, you weren't in the exact same order as me, but it was still fine. No, I mean, it's, it's, that he put him in. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it, he yeah. put him in. And like, if you if you've not seen Mel Gibson at the end of Lethal Weapon Two smoking a cigarette while he's got bullet holes in his fucking lungs, you've not seen a man be a man. Was that um what what movie? Which Lethal Weapon was it when him and uh, uh, Murtaugh? Uh, but he's but, on the toilet. Oh, that's two. Yeah, that's two. That's a great scene. That's a fucking awesome scene, by the yeah, way. That's amazing. it. Almost it, like it's so well acted. You think it's like, uh, it, like it, like it's ad libbed, but it's not. Like it's yeah. just so well acted. That that's where their their friendship really solidified for me. No doubt about it. Uh, oh, sorry, I read that already. Uh, Jaeger Bomb said, "What are the chances of doing one more Friday Night Fights of the Best Final Girl? Kirsty Hellraiser, Lori Halloween, Sydney Scream. That's a pretty good fucking that, show. I, I I'd love to do it. Uh, I think we've talked about it before, and I, I'm 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 going to go on record and say, um, I, and I, I think we both have agreed to this. Kirsty gets no love nope. in the Final Girl. Uh, no in love. the Final Girl. In the Final Girl uh, talk, or, or uh, you know." Um, who's the best final girl is conversation. I always yeah. feel like Kirsty never gets mentioned. And like she had, in my opinion, she had to deal with some of the worst shit ever in her entire life. Yep. Like her, her stepdad's dead. His brother was fucking his wife. Goddamn. There's monsters in a box. They're from hell. They want to put like chains in my hoo-ha. It's a lot of bad stuff going on there that kind of overshadows a lot of other final girls, but I would love to do that. I think that would be a really fun thing. Yeah, I, I think we should do it, man. I think that'll be a really fun one for sure. Good call, man. Vinny C said, hey, guys, I found some great VHS tapes at the flea market today. That's a good fucking day. Out for Justice was my top find. Anybody seen Richie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Out for Justice is some good shit, man. That yeah, was like one of the other like uh, nationalities uh, that Steven Seagal identifies with, that he is an Italian as well. Like he's either Italian or he's Japanese or he's Native American yeah. or he's... But Out for Justice is some good shit right there, man. 
Yeah, fucking A, dude. I love that movie. And, uh, uh, dude, one of my favorite things in the world is when you just get the time. You just get the time, you know? And you have the place. Like, once you've sucked dry your local spots, the Goodwill, Mm -hmm. the Peddler's Mall, and you know they don't have anything, finding a new place that could possibly have VHS tapes, it just makes you feel like a kid inside opening up baseball cards again. I fucking love doing it. Um, I'm glad you had fun, man. But, I mean, my Uh, favorite cigar is hard, Hard Target. It's always been Hard Target. Yeah, it's hard to argue. He's the best. Uh, I also like that Jason movie, Halloween 7. <laughs> That's a killer. It'll get you. Jay Boogie. He's He looks like me when I'm drunk looking at a urinal while I'm pissing in it. Because <laughs> like, you know you get that fucking... Like, he looks like me when I'm single and I'm looking at a girl that I think is hot and I'm seeing what his profile pic is. <laughs> <laughs> he says, thank you guys for being 10 out of 10. Fucking thank you, man. 10, Billy thank Bob. You, man. Mikey. Mike, you ready for the Jordan Love takeover? And have you guys seen the new subspecies trailer? What the fuck is subspecies, number one? Subspecies is a uh, line of films that came out uh, starting in the late 80s, early 90s, I believe, which is about a fat-looking meatloaf vampire guy that goes around looking for a stone. And that's it. I remember watching Subspecies 2 when I was a kid, uh, and... Uh, then I, I was like, I don't, I wasn't even interested then, but that's what subspecies is about. It's about a fucking vampire that like is looking for like some kind of Rosetta stone to read. <laughs> no, it wasn't a Rosetta stone, but they're looking for like some kind of amulet or stone or something like that. It's a very cheesy plot storyline. I think they made four of those fuckers, which I was, I was surprised they got the funding must've been like an Elon Musk type of guy that keep on funding a, a losing project. But Yeah. Um, I haven't even heard they were doing a new subspecies at all. Um, and I could be wrong. You might be talking about a different subspecies, but I think that is the only one I can think of is that really shitty vampire one. That'd be awesome. If that, that's way cooler. I thought, I thought it was like a, a video game or something. Um, as far as Jordan love. Yes, I am. In fact, ready. Uh, I, I'm an Aaron Rodgers fan, but I, I'm just kind of ready for it to move on. Cause he's just so goddamn controversial all the time. And I'm like, I just want to talk some fucking football. But I will be rooting for Aaron Rodgers and the Jets this season. You um, piece of shit. Uh, not as much as when I'm did you? Packers. When did you come up? I didn't even know you were doing this. In your, did you have a revelation in your I life in say, a couple of weeks I, ago? You're, you're jumping at conclusions like you Tennessee have a Titans. <laughs> <laughs> Packers did this to Brett Favre. They did this to Aaron Rodgers. I do not like the way the front office of the Green Bay Packers handles their business. That being said. I'm a Packers fan first and foremost. I will be rooting for the Packers above all, but I do hope that Aaron Rodgers does well for the for the Jets. And if the Packers don't make it, by God, I hope the fucking Jets. Well, if, well. here's the thing though: if the Woo! Jets win a Super Bowl, if the Jets yep. win the Super Bowl with Rodgers, you have to fucking text Cody and be like, "I'm, I'm sorry." No, I do not, because he rooted for uh, you know, no. But when Tampa Bay won with yeah, Tom no. Brady, it's you different. Were like, it's, not, it's, not it's different. different. It's no, it's not. different, dude. When Tampa Bay, because Cody, if you guys don't know, Cody's a Patriots fan. When Brady went to Tampa Bay, Cody said, fuck that guy. I hope that they fucking suck. And I know that we, we'll oh, suck I, because oh, the I, Patriots <laughs> did the right thing by letting the fucking semantics, go. Dude. I he know waited. what you're doing. He yeah. fucking <laughs> waited until the fucking <laughs> Bucks got into the NFC Championship. He's like, yeah. dude, Brady's just the fucking best, man. I'm really rooting for him. <laughs> Mike's like, getting ahead. You you're trying to get ahead. ahead. You're trying you to get ahead. jump in that. at the last minute. Anyway, yeah, that's, but that's he, a personal issue. Hey, but it is weird though that he's going to the Jets, and that's where Favre went. And Favre had a great, like he had a really good team. With, yeah, uh, I look when he was at the, the Jets. Packers, fucking over Jordan Love in another thirteen years and doing yeah. the same fucking song and dance. But I think Jordan Love's going to be great, and I'm really rooting for him to do awesome. How about? Oh, sorry. Uh, what was the vote on Scream Two? Um, yeah, vote on Scream Two was closer than I suspected. Scream 2 oh. gets a best of the best, 56% to 40. Whoa. Okay. All oh. right. The, oh. the mm. first best of the best since Aliens. Nice. We have picked some shitty ones to start with though. Um all right, let's let's speed around a little bit, Jay. Just a little okay. bit. Just time yeah. a bit. Right. No, big, no big deal. Bit. Let's do it. Let's get it. Quiet place part 2. God damn, do I love uh, Emily Blunt and John Krasinski? She's hot and she's got a British accent. It's just a double greatness. Uh it's fine. It's fine. I agree. Yep, it's, it's fucking fine. fine. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with Quiet Place Part 2 at all. It was a little too quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I like a little bit. I like a, a little, little too quiet. It looks like um, rap. Yeah, a little too rap. Uh, That's, for me, dude, I, I, I know this is going to be controversial, but for me, best of the best. 
I am in that Fox. You got a great together. soundtrack. And the guys are back. It's got Vigo the Carpathian. It's got some great yeah. fucking lines, man. Come on. I can't believe it got shit on as it's got the goddamn Scolari brothers and the courtroom fight scene. Get off yep. your high horses. What the fuck? I cannot That's believe that it was controversial that this movie, saw, like people were giving it bad ratings. That's Dude, the best, to me, man. It's just like Ninja Turtles 2. I actually prefer it to the original. I think it's funner. I wow. think it's it's like everybody's comfortable in their own shoes. You got the pink fucking slime and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You had the green ooze. I just like green and pink shit. And yeah. I'm, I love it. So it is definitely the best of the best for me. It's one of my all-time favorite movies. Sometimes shit happens. Someone's got to deal with it. And who you going to call? By the way, it's got some <laughs> of the best lines ever. Let's see what uh, happens well, when we take away the puppy. <laughs> it also it's just funny that they were fucking that toaster like he's like did you fuck that toaster? Oh, like, you guys it's always the quiet ones and you helped because like, <laughs> peter was like you're not sleeping with it are you ray <laughs> <laughs> you know he fucking was that weird fuck mm. conjuring hey I, I just remember an yeah. old man in a fucking recliner <laughs> yeah we <laughs> it's a british toast I yeah don't know. <laughs> it was in a british like it was always it was raining outside <laughs> and there was a British man talking somewhere. There was that garbage uh, water I, tea. I don't know. Yeah. We talked about this. I remember Mike and I went and saw this in the theater. And it felt like they focused way too much on the Warren's love story part. And they yeah. were like less horror in it. I put it's fine. It's not eat up wiener, but it's it's just fine. That is the only place for it to go, Jay. You are 100% correct. It is just fine. I don't, I think I've watched it once since then, maybe. I tried to watch it the other the other day, and I just fast forwarded all the parts that were boring and got to the good parts. That's literally all I remember is like, "You sound like you're from London." It's like, I love you, <laughs> yeah. right? And then all of a sudden, they're like, "This man's chair is haunted." <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> so I, I got know. you know. To be fair, I mean, there were some cool, like, awesome horror moments in that, like the nun and like the 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 the, the bouncy man or whatever the fuck he was called in the hallway. But it's like you guys took forever to even get to that point. Yeah, like all you guys yeah. want to talk about is like, is she faking it? I don't know. It's like, bitch, you guys are the Warrens. You guys will chase anything. <laughs> you know they tell the truth. Let's do a fucking banger here, real quick. Oh, Halloween. Uh, Ooh, the original. Oh well, it is the original. Uh, man, that's uh, it's, it's weird. It's, like, it's, yeah. Well, uh, here's the weird thing. I used to think. I mean, back in my younger years, when I was just a lonely man drinking alone at the bar. I would say I would put it at something between it's I like fine to call and that Tuesday. It was yeah, it was last night. Uh, it was called pretty sexual or it's fine. Um, as I've gotten older and more experienced in my life, I would put it as maybe one of the best of the best. But it's still hard for me to say that. I feel like I I can comfortably fall in pretty sexual. It's a pretty sexual film, but it's not like best of the best. I am. It's a, it's a struggle bus for me. It is because like a. Um, I don't want to put it in best of the best because people are like, you're fucking Halloween Toronto. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, no, yeah, <laughs> we're not. But also, um, I want to put it in best of the best because like the fucking ending, that classic great. With Michael yeah. getting shot in the face, Loomis, <laughs> good shit, time, Michael, and then blowing them up. <laughs> And That's Michael good. walking with the fucking flames. But that being said, that middle portion was, a, as you like to call it, a soggy diaper. Well, it not to mention, very... well, he also used a scalpel. Yeah. Well, he, he did pick up that chick really hard. Yeah, I know, but it was like, come on, man. You can you can't find another instrument for your rage. It does it does have some of the best kills in it. Like it does uh, for sure of the franchise, the hot tub kill. That's really um uh, I'm a fuck, dude. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Well, it's I also really got the know. operating room table where you like drained all their blood, but you didn't get to see all that shit. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's put it, let's put it to a vote while we're going through some other stuff. Yeah, that's let, a good let, one. Let, let the people decide because that's yeah. tough. You got to tell us. You got to tell us. Um Halloween 2, 1981. Come on down. Yeah, it's such a weird... It, it, for me, it was like one of those movies that started out... Um, I was younger, and I, I... Like, I don't know what it was, man. It was Maybe it was the mask. Because, I mean, we all know the, the lore behind it. Like, it was damaged. You know, she... Uh, the um, What was her name? Deborah Hill. Smoking Deborah Hill was smoking, and it was, like, damaged, and it looked like shit. It was stretched out. I don't know. Smoking them ciggies. Yeah. Let's take a look uh, at while they're voting on that, um, can you catch me up to the super chitties while I go take me a pee pee break? Uh, what was uh, the last one that you did? We are at, we just went to through Jay Boogie, by the way. Thank you, Jay Boogie. I don't know if we said that or not. Texas Tootin is our next one at 8 25 p.m. Eastern Time. All right, hold on. I got, I got a little bit to go here. Hold on one second now. Hold on. Just don't.
Get your farts in a, in, in your panties, spreading that poop. Give me one second now. God damn, man. Thank you guys so much for, for your support, dude. That's so cool that you guys are like, there's so, there's so many of you guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's awesome. It's nice to yeah. do a Friday night stream again. It's been a, been a minute, been like. A well, minute. I, that's why I was asking: uh, Are you guys ever going to go back to that formula? And you know, um, sure. Uh, but <laughs> we're we were pop trying in to do, and out. We were trying to do something different to help our livers. J <laughs> 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 uh, uh, Bo uh, Boogle is that the last? Is that, that was the, one the last one? And the next one's Texas Tootin. Texas Tootin. All right, I got it. Don't worry about it. I got the Texas BRB. Tootin. All right, Don't BRB. Sweat it. He's going to go to B&B &B and BRB. All right, there. Texas Tootin comes in feeling hot, feeling sexy with his uh, kitten cat profile pic. says, got me some Taco Bell with the Diablo sauce. My brown mouth going to be on fire. You're going to be on toe it there, Texas Tootin. Anyways, Jeepers Creepers 2 is arguably one of the best sequels in all horror. You know what, Texas Tootin? I got to be honest with you. I think you might be speaking a little bit of truth from the church. I think Jeepers Creepers 2 was... Mighty fine. It wasn't no 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 problems with me with Jeepers Creepers too. I I'll be honest with you. I liked it. I liked it quite a bit. Now I don't think it was no goddamn best of the best. Now you now you 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 you're drinking too many vodka drinks there to be talking about that uh, tech student, but some good stuff right there. Thank you, man. Austin says, uh happy Easter to those who celebrate. Uh, true story. One Easter, I was in church, sat on a folding chair, huge butt boil exploded, <laughs> pooped in a coffee can. God damn, man. That sounds like a Kevin Smith scene. That's terrible and painful sounding. But you survived it. You got stronger. And now you're here telling us all about it. And I appreciate it. <laughs> a butt boil exploded. Jesus. That's crazy. But yeah. <laughs> thanks uh thanks so much austin looking sexy as fucking that profile pic bro um we're going down through here i know that was annoying i'm sorry uh jaguar rose thank you so much uh i will let him read that uh that was for mike specifically so it's jaguar rose at 8 35 so i will not read that that's for mike apparently that's the that's a that's a super fan for Michael. Um, Norris coming in again with the hotness. What's up, my dudes? How will you? How you and your families are? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I think you meant hope you and your families are doing well. I enjoy H2 the most, but Friday 2 may be the best sequel. Happy Easter to you and your family, Jay. What's your thought on the news? Did we read that? Did you? Am I behind? Am I fucking this up? I don't know. Did you ask that question again? What the fuck is going on? It was, he said 835, right? Okay, Norris. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what. Uh, I don't. Uh, I'll get back to you on that because I think I answered your question earlier. But um, Joe Rock, Joe X Rock uh, says, uh, LOL, when people thought Tina Tinu. Tinu Terra was killer in six. You know, fuck those people. Joe X Rock. Fuck them. I like your profile pic too. Is that Miles Morales? That's some good shit right there. Um, I'm terrible at this. I mean, you guys wonder why I don't do solo streams? Because it would be fucking terrible. It would be literally like, I don't know what it would be like. It'd be like Jim Carrey and Batman Forever doing the experiments by himself. Do you just see sparks mingle? <laughs> uh, let's see. What else we got? Going down through, making sure. Oh, I missed some. Hold on. Drew Gold says, I made a list. I made a list all-time great uh, Wham commentaries. Oh, cool, cool man. That's awesome. Because I don't think there was any of them that were great. But that's awesome if you thought so. Includes Candyman, Spider-Man 2, and It. Them's the revisits. Love yous. Slendy, tell me who Corey Feldman is. Well, um, Corey Feldman was a child actor from the 80s, all right? And so what he did was he was in a very big movie like The Goonies, for the one. He was in the Friday the 13th films as well. And then he went to vote on Don Tello in the 1990 film Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. And then later on when him realized, guess what? 
Me luck right now, me gonna be finger for good morning America. And it was such travel stool for me and people watch Core Family. So that's who Core Family basically used. He also thinks there's people out to get him. It's very scary. <laughs> I hope that uh, does the best for you, Drew. Um, Wyatt Atley says, Hi, everyone. Can't stay tonight, but I just wanted to drop by and show some love. Have a great evening. Well, thank you so much, Wyatt. We really appreciate you stopping by and giving us some love. We will return it one day if we ever meet you in person. Uh, awesome. Thank you. Hope you have a good evening as well and a great weekend. Uh, what else we got here? Ethan. Coming in with the thing to say, sup, you sexy SOBs. Just watched the original prom night for the first time last night. Loved it. But the dance scene also made me want to get up and boogie down. Now, that's the film that gets you out of your seat and involved in the flick. And I don't remember it. <laughs> but I'm glad that it got you hyped up for, and got you that footloose moment. Uh, so there was a specific uh, question for you since she likes you better than me and she needs to unsubscribe. <laughs> uh, Jaguar, we don't put up with that shit around here. But anyhow, uh, that's for you. And then also, um, Ethan, I, I I just read him uh, was about the the dance scene in prom night, and I don't remember it that much. So I, I'm gonna let you answer that, and I've really gotta go drain my wiener real quick. Okay. Before we get on to the last leg of this adventure, so I'll okay. Be back. Enjoy your pippy. Film it for me because I want to watch it later. Jaguar, thank you. And I always appreciate people who like me better than Jay. Uh, I really do. Uh, you guys are my favorite, and I'll never forget. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, Sam, I love your fucking face. I love your fucking face, Jaguar. Rose, and you also have a badass name. It just sounds like a tattoo, like in a cool way. Says, what does it mean when you say 23 is <laughs> Kidoo? Use all the time. I don't understand the reference. So, um, Oh, if we had more time, I would show it to you. Actually, I would find it. But there's uh, the old school Tenacious D on HBO. Um, and I, by the way, I only say the thing about Jay because everybody knows that everybody likes Jay better. <laughs> so uh, I, I appreciate I appreciate that. No, but uh, the it was uh, HBO the first look or not first look, but HBO back in the day in like the nineties. That's how Tenacious D, Jack Black's band, Tenacious D started, and they had the show on um hbo and they would come on and they would do this open mic night thing and it was fucking hilarious but he was he was he was talking about how to write a song he's like he's like how do you create a song and he was like i i could write a song i could just make up a song i could 23 skidoo you a song but that would be false that would be false and that that's just where that comes from so whenever i get the chance i'm like i say 23 skidoo because that's where i remember it from but that's the exact reference that's from jaguar and i i love you for catching that because it's one of my favorite things in the world to say um and dude the fucking dance scene in <sighs> prom night i wish i could remember it i really do uh we did a skit on prom night way back when where i wore a ski mask and attacked jay and it was one of my favorite skits we ever did. Nobody watched it. It was like a two-minute video. Um, so I have to go back and see that. I'm sorry. I really wish that. Um, am I scrolling through the right thing right here? Because I'm not seeing that anywhere. Where did it go? Where do you go, my lovely? Oh, 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 oh. Where do you go? I don't, I don't see that super chat on here. Anywhere that he was talking about. But... In the meantime, when we figure it out and catch it up, uh, let's do start with the poll that we did, which was for Halloween 2. So you can't just say that we're just a Halloween channel because we were confused on it. But you guys said, as far as Halloween 2, best of the best are pretty sexual. You guys said 56% to 45%. Halloween 2 is a best of the best. And I'm totally cool with that. It's probably where it belongs, to be honest with you. Probably where it belongs. So well done, folks. Well done, your alls on your alls part. And um, <clears throat> I'm scrolling and I'm scrolling and I'm going and I'm going. And where the fuck were we? What is happening to my soul? Um, God damn it. 
Where are we? Sorry, I'm catching up. I am catching up. Um, I don't know which one of these J Red, so I can't do any of them yet. So I will jump into one of these, and I'm willing to bet that I can do this with Jay agreeing with me because I know in my heart and soul and mind and farts where I think Jay will put it. How do you guys feel about A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2? Because in my opinion, there is no doubt in Texas's Dark Nights that Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge, some would call it the gay Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, Mark Patton fucking killed it. I think this movie is the best of the best. I think it's maybe the most underrated Part 2 of fucking all time. I think it's the best of the best. I think it had this the scariest, the gnarliest, the coolest looking Freddy when he was on that bridge. It was mean as fuck that you're all my children now. I think it's underrated as shit and one of the best sequels of all time. And Jay, I said that I know you're going to agree with me on this. Nightmare on Elm Street 2, fucking best of the best. No, it's a gay movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's 100%. Gays, it's no, it's a, it's 100 No, it's 100%, uh, 100 uh best of the best. Also underrated as fuck. Jesse I know that he's not a final girl, but he's one of the, like, he's one, I think he's the only uh, male uh, survivor in any of the Nightmare films, which is standalone badass. I think it's cool. And, and not to mention that survived three and four and like, uh, um, they, well, there's I a mean, couple dudes, like Joey and whatever final, survived the movie. Well, no, I mean, but he's like the main, like the final dude, like he survived it. Um, right. Yeah. And, and not to mention the, the makeup effects that they did for Freddy Krueger, you were talking about, he looked mean. They, they went more of a witch type of makeup effect on him, and, and, and they changed his eyes. I think the makeup on, on Freddy uh, in, in Freddy 2 is the best of, of the series, to be completely honest. I think he looks the coolest in the sequel. But yeah, it's best of the best. Get out of here. Yeah, I'm, I'm 100% with you, and I knew you would say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I couldn't find where you were on the Super Chats, by the way. Uh, I, I didn't see the one. I, I, well, I was the last one I, 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 I answered was... Um, Ethan at 916. Okay, 916. So I wasn't oh, okay. That's what it was then. All right. Um, so you caught you just caught more than I thought you did. So yeah. I'm glad I didn't fucking but I was thrown off yeah. by uh Jaguar or whatever. Um yeah, that's why I told I said I, playing I said favorites I said, and things like that. And I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why Jack are you throwing this whole program off? I told her I said I always appreciate people who like me better than Jay. So like you're my favorite, yeah. Too. But I mean, I'm and... usually now I'm on the bottom tier. And I don't like that, you know. You, you, <laughs> like, let's just not throw the whole programming off. I, I said the only reason I do that though is because we all know that everybody likes Jay better. It's just so, a now. I, no, I, I, was... I don't want. I don't like competition like that. Okay, <laughs> let's just all get along. <laughs> oh, dude, I you remember that fucking one guy who started that poll? He's like, who do you like on the channel better, Jay or Mike? I didn't know. Well, I wasn't. I, was I like, wasn't hey, man, really, Fuck you. I wasn't really following. But I didn't know. And then Mike told me about it. And then he was. I was like, well, who won? <laughs> And then he was like, well, I was like, I think you were up by one point. I'm like, well, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm not just mad about this because Jay won, but seriously, that's not cool, guys. Don't do that. Isn't uh, it weird how petty people are? Like, I mean, even like I'm talking about ourselves. Like, it's so fucking stupid. <laughs> like, people can get so petty about shit. Why would you do that? <laughs> like, Why would you do that to us? Stop trying to make us fight each other. I was um, like, we're gonna be like Jimmy and Billy Lee and Double Dragon. We have to fight each other for Marion <laughs> at the end of the game. <laughs> uh, Ed Boy Movie said Carpenter's '82 thing, solid sequel to 2011's thing. Well, I, um, I, get, I mean, I've never, I just don't picture the thing as a sequel. Like, no, me neither. Is it technically? But like, yeah, me, well, yeah, the thing. well, yeah. If if you really wanted to play that game, you could you could play the game that 2011 thing because it is a prequel. That Carpenter's '82, which is one of the best horror sci-fi films ever is a sequel. That's stupid, though. I mean, I think there's only one thing, and it's the, the Carpenter 82, so... That's just how I see it, too. But if, if we were doing that, Ed Boy, then the thing is definitely best of the best. Yeah, I mean, if it is, yeah. like, if you consider it that way, for sure. I just added one because I thought about it, by the way, as we we're speaking, because this one's interesting. The Strangers Pray at Night. Yeah, but it's got Damien in it, so he can eat a penis. Fucking Damien. God, what a turd he God. is. But God I'm damn. Just, such a whiner. He's like, Mike, are you coming shirtless to the pool party? I'm like, I don't know, Damien. I don't he's know. He's like, I'm still wiping the cum off my fucking chin. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a great guy. Actually, I, I will put um, The Strangers Pray at Night, and this might be shocking. Um, and it's not because we know Damien. Even before we met Damien, uh, we had high praise for this film. I, I think it was pretty sexual. 
to be honest with you. Right where I'm at, dude. Underrated. I, I love the 80s vibe. I love the soundtrack. I love the way it, it looked. I thought it was a pretty solid sequel, uh, pretty sexual sequel, to be honest. And uh, coming off such an amazing movie as The Strangers, I didn't really know what they were going to do with it. And they did their own thing, which worked. And, and again, I, I feel like I watched that film and I saw the aesthetic, the pool scene. I always remember the pool scene, which is it's, it's, it's one, it really is a great scene. And the, and the soundtrack and everything about it was, it just, it, it flowed, it, like it, it did its own thing, but it was, it was true to the characters. I don't know. I just, I thought it was, it was sexual, like it was a sexual movie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you, dude. I loved it. I had a panic. I'll never forget. Like I was working third shift at the time and like Katie was with me and we were at the theater. See, and I had a huge fucking panic attack right before we walked in the theater. I thought I was going to fucking die. And I sat down and watched it. So that, that helped add to the movie. Yeah. But yeah, dude, the eighties vibes, the meanness of it. The, I love how they went supernatural at the end of it. Fucking just what I love that movie, man. So yeah, pretty sexual really good. indeed. Um, no doubt about it. Quick to the point, to the point, no faking. How do we feel about poltergeist? Do man, I gotta be honest. Um, uh, I really like this movie a lot. Uh, it's not it's not the level of Poltergeist one, like not even close to it. But I feel like it's pretty sexual, and I can even flirt with best of the best to be honest, because you introduce um, the bad guy, the priest in this. You're all gonna die out there. It sounds like Joe Biden, <laughs> <laughs> and he looks like it. But beyond that, I feel like. Like it's got like I I love um and I can't remember the Native American that's in it I love that guy I think he's so cool and 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 the, there's a scene that's really fucking it's actually really disturbing when um the dad drinks the tequila bottle and he eats the worm and then he starts becoming the thing it's got some really cool horror elements in it and I think it just expanded the mythology of Poltergeist in a good way and, and I I think they. It was a sequel that just built on the success of the first one, and it didn't really try to be like, I'm just going to do my own thing. <clears throat> Fuck the original material. So I, I feel like Pretty Sexual is a solid pick. I'm 100% with you on Pretty Sexual, mainly because I don't remember <laughs> the movie at all. I cannot remember this. I need to reel back and rewatch it, but I do remember enjoying it. So I'm just going to go with you on this one and say Pretty Sexual it is. I love it. That man. Works. I think it's a really good movie. That works for me. Um, the Bell of the Ball. The bell of the ball ah. is this dude right here. Uh, <laughs> it looks oh, like me asking the uh, asking the bartender for one more drink when he knows I don't have any money, and I'll say I'll pay you back tomorrow. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'll pay you back like, tomorrow, sir. You know what? I know I said I was going to leave, but I'll have one more. I've done that before, more. and it's so embarrassing. I remember being at the karaoke bar, and uh, he was so. <laughs> I had no money. And like I was broke as fuck, and I he let me go, uh, and I was like, "I'll pay you back tomorrow." Can I have a tab run up? And he's like, "Yeah, sure, no problem." But I kept doing it, and I paid it back every time. But he was like, "Nah, man, not tonight." And I looked just <laughs> like that. I was like, "Kusu, can I? Can you spot me?" And he was like, <laughs> "I kept doing, it. I kept doing it though." And he's like, "Man, no." Not tonight. If you don't got the money, you don't got the money. And then I begged other people for beer. <laughs> I look just like this dude. <laughs> uh, Those are yeah, dark man. Times. That's a that's a that's Evil Dead too, right? Yeah, Evil Dead too. That's, that's the best, best of the best, best man. Right? That's yeah, one of the best of the best. best. You gotta go it's in there. Fucking classic, amazing. He gets his own little icon where everybody else got the thing. It's 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 one of the best. And if we ever do a ranking of one of these, then. Then that'll be interesting to see where these rank. Yeah. We should do Friday Night Fights of these because that would be interesting. Dude, it's yeah. great. These tier lists are great because we have this and the action tier list. Which, by the way, the action tier list that we did a few weeks ago can always be added to. But this is great because you can break these down and do verses. Yeah. No. Exactly. Like, there's so much shit you can do. Like we we put our bunk beds together, so now we have time for so many activities. <laughs> uh, so can we do it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Stacy James in here. What's up, dude? Says, I got hired to write for this music website. Hey. Another step in a long road, but it's just been great. Just want to say thanks for the inspiration and the laughs. Hey, dude. Hey, man. That's, that's fucking... awesome. Congratulations, dude. Yeah, I love the way you put that, too. Another step in a long road, man. That's how I feel. Every single day you wake up, you fight your ass off for your passion, and every single time you get one of those little fucking pump-ups, man, it just feels the fucking best. So congratulations. Congratulations, Stacy. Stacey. Stacey. Steer, uh, you, cheers, Steers. Mm -hmm. Don't fuck yours. Don't fuck Gary 
or Gary. Oh, oh my God, it's Gary. It says John Wick Four makes me want an ultra violent Grand Theft Auto movie in bird's eye view, like the original game that only goes to normal camera and talking scenes. That'd be cool. I mean, you know, it almost you know, I think that a really cool GTA movie would be uh, if you. And again, in my opinion, I think Hardcore Henry was underrated. I would do a GTA in a Hardcore Henry style. That would be, yeah. Like, that, you, like you know, it, like in GTA, it's like the freedom to do anything, to commit any crime, to be like crazy as fuck, and to be as crazy as you want to be. I think if you do it in a very violent, over-the-top type of, uh, almost satirical type of way with GTA and put a Hardcore Henry uh, view on it, I think it would... I think that would be awesome. I think that would be really cool. Yeah, and there's this there's so there's this scene in John Wick 4. Uh, you haven't seen it yet, have you? Mm-mm. Uh, so there's there's one scene it's a badass fuck and don't worry no spoilers but like there's a badass action scene where the camera goes up above the the house that he's in fighting wow. and killing people Sex. and it, you're watching him as like a video game version go through and fucking kill people it's not like freddy's that's badass i like that it's fucking cool dude so like if you did well, I have that, to, I, i'm still waiting on i have to watch john wick three i'm still not caught up yeah yeah and john wick four is the the best sequel for sure but like yeah is it better than the first uh no no for me the first one's the best because it's it's the most realistic and it's got the emotional edge but john yeah. four is definitely the best sequel but yeah that's that that shot's cool i like what you're saying and dude it's so funny because i thought the exact same thing i thought of like hardcore henry if someone did a game like that and made it a gta game gary you're yeah. on to fucking something that'd be pretty rad man yeah um nighttime pizza grinder says mike and jay is pizza well related to you or a cousin maybe <laughs> who the fuck is that uh, Pizza Well, he's, he's a the YouTube dude. He's a YouTuber who does horror stuff. We met him. We saw him at um, at uh, uh, Scarefest last year. Um, no, fuck that grifter. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> no, I don't know who he is. I, I, uh, I we met like to be honest. Uh, there was we met a lot of great folk, but we were also drinking heavily, so it sometimes would slip Huge. my brain. But I don't know of any relation. To uh, yeah, Pizza Well, not related. I don't. I don't come from these parts. I'm actually from Virginia Beach, uh, West Virginia, and th- those parts. So we we migrated here. But I will say, Pete's well is a, a superior, kind and good dude. He seems like a genuine motherfucker, and I'm glad to have him in Kentucky, around us. Maybe yeah. who knows? Maybe one of these days. I can't wait for him to come up to the booth at Scarefest and punch me in the face and be like, "You remember me now?" I'm like, "I do now. <laughs> I, I do now." Remember, you'd remember if, if you saw him. You, you'd probably remember if you saw him. It's just the name's throwing you off, probably. Misfit Thor. I hope that's you looking all sexy at the wrestling event. Ah. Says, uh, <laughs> <laughs> being a USMC vet. Hey, hey, thank you for your fucking service, my friend. Fuck Says, yeah, man. Um, I think you're not supposed to throw a fuck in front of that. That sounded disrespectful. I, disrespectful. I apologize. But um, says uh, I have seen plenty of strippers at the old Dirtwood in Jacksonville that had saw. Uh, that had those two, <laughs> yeah, those dude. Two you know what I'm talking about, dude. Like you can't not like look at it. Like they're doing the the, the bouncy thing in front of you when they're doing the splits and their vaginas hitting the fucking thing, and then they come up and their nails are like broken as fuck, and like it's got like dirt residuals under it from the probably the alleyway they were scraping to see if they could find meth and you're like wiener erection gone <laughs> like, i don't know what it is man you need the complete if you're gonna go like obviously what strip clubs are it's all about the fantasy thing i don't know but you need the complete thing and if you got like some broken ass dirty ass nails man that's the killer that's a killer yeah. for me watch out <laughs> yeah that's true I, I mean i've not i've not been on the market in a very very long time but i would imagine if like some girl had like some shit under her fuck fingernails and like some ketchup. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking nasty, dude. I don't know what it is. It's pretty gross. It's like you can't even take but, care of yourself. It's like it, like for me, it's not just like the dirty fingernails. It's like if they don't take care of their feet. If, they, if their feet's got like some dirty ass like goddamn roughage on it, and it's got like some dirty toenail garbage going on, or like like if if a girl has sandals on, and you look at their feet, and their feet look like the Hobbit. They look like they will, you know, like the Hobbit. And you're you like, ever had a girl jerk you off with her feet before? Uh, no, but I mean, it, it sounds fun. But <laughs> as long as their feet are like good, you know, they take care of their feet. And here's the <laughs> thing, okay? And this leads into an important thing. If you look at a girl's feet when they're wearing sandals or like, you know, platform shoes or whatever, and their feet are exposed, and if they don't take care of their feet, they probably don't take care of a lot of the other parts of their body. That's that, that's rule of fucking thumb, hundred percent. I'm telling you, if you see a girl with some goddamn hobbit-like feet, 
Guarantee her vagina smells like mayonnaise. Well, same Guarantee. thing with dudes, though. I imagine if you get a dude who's got like dirt under his fingernails or whatever, he probably doesn't wash his sack. Well, the figure, well, here's the thing about dudes. Dudes, their feet, it really don't matter that much. I mean, of course, you, you know, take care of yourself. But if you have a dude with like dirt on their nails or something, like if they work in construction or they're welders or something, that's one thing. But I don't know. I think it's different for girls. I think it, it, girls are like, because they're supposed to be like, you know, feminine and you know take care of that, you know and if you just look over and you see like a gnarled ass fucking toenail that looks like it's like a crooked tree in the forest of despair and you're like the fuck dude tree. i don't even want to imagine what that goddamn <laughs> secret garden pussy looks like <laughs> <laughs> oh my fucking god hey what about texas chainsaw massacre too I think this okay, is I, I'm not be. I, no, well, you you don't like it? No, I know I you don't like it. Movie. Well, here's the thing about this movie. To be honest with you, I I did like it, and I did I did, I do like it. I appreciate it for what it tried to do because it was trying to blend the, the the comedy into it. And I know it's beloved. I know that people love this movie. But to be honest with you, after watching the masterpiece that was the original, man, I gotta put it. For me, it's the same kind of thing uh, with Blair Witch too. Um, it's not as bad, don't get me wrong, but I feel like it's fine. I'll put it in the it's fine category. And that's will, and that's as far I'll give it that because it's got some great death scenes and it's got some cool dialogue and it's got some great comedy bits, but I was not ex when the first time I watched um Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original, I was not expecting this complete <laughs> departure from what they were doing in the original, to be honest. Yeah. I, I, I hate the movie because the, the two guys in the opening are so fucking annoying. They're, they're my literally, out of all of horror, all the horror I've ever watched in my life, the two guys in the beginning are the worst characters in horror for me. And I thought that, like, I, I really didn't like the family in this one. Like, everybody loves Chop Top, and they talk about oh, Bill Mosley. Yeah. And, like, Bill Mosley's great. I don't yeah. want to, you know, wrestle him at a fucking convention that we're at. But, like, I, I think he's great, but I really hate the character of Chop Top. I thought it was annoying, over the top, too much. I do not get the love for it. I will go with It's Fine, though, because Dennis Hopper and a fucking Dennis Texas Hopper, Chainsaw man. Massacre 2 is pretty goddamn wild. And I like that old, fuck you, Charlie. There is good moments in it. Uh, but overall, I just do not enjoy watching that movie. But It's Fine, I feel like, is the correct place for it to Which go. is weird to me. I, I Like, it's always strange to me that when you say that I don't enjoy that film as much as everybody else, that it's controversial. I would have figured that it would have been universal that people were like, I was expecting something a little bit, uh, something more severe. Yeah. They wanted or, to make like, a comedy. I was like, but why would you do that? Fine. Like, here's the thing, like even nightmare on Elm street two didn't take their character and make him a comedy. They actually made Freddie more dark in the sequel. Mm hmm. I mean, it just seems weird. Like, you're taking yeah, Leatherface, who's based on Ed Gein, and making him, like, home G. Willicker. So I'd like to eat people and wear their face. Like, the it kind of seems weird. The legs and the fucking chainsaw, um, that scene in the in the radio DJ thing with, like, the chainsaw and the ice and stuff. And Leatherface, he literally jizzes in his pants. was one of the funniest yeah. things I've ever seen in my fucking life. So that there was, was moments, but, yeah. Well, you know what I felt like? It felt like you were... It, it, it just felt like you... you, you 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 signed up for one movie and then you got something that was totally opposite of what you were yeah. like trying to watch. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you're Matthew Lillard at the end of SLC Punk when Heroin Bob's was like, I wasn't ready. Dude, that I is the that, by the way, that's one of the best scenes of all time. And Lillard really does show that he can act really, really Fuck well yeah. in that scene. But it does come out of nowhere and it and it kind of it arrests developments the whole film. It kind of feels like yeah, it, it kind of does feel like a scene that they could have cut from the movie. Oh god! Just, uh, no, no I'm, I'm saying like because the tone of the movie was one way, right? If they cut that part out, they might have maintained the tone they were going for. I mean, I'm glad they kept the the, the scene in, but it does like shift the film immediately. Yeah. But it's kind of like your best friends, you're having a good time, life's a gas, everything's a joke, everything's yeah. fun, and then someone fucking dies. And it's like, whoa. I, I SLC Punk, you guys, if you've never seen it, that really one good. with Empire Records on the on Rex Manning Day, please watch those fucking movies. They're amazing. I, I implore you. Um, I also implore you, Jay, to tell me your thoughts on Psycho 2, because I think that this is tough. Um, I, I feel like it's uh, either going to be pretty sexual or, or best of the best. 
I agree. I really, I, I, I think that um, this movie does a, an amazing job of capturing um, Anthony Perkins' uh, character, um, Norman Bates. Per, uh, like the idea that he's out and he's trying to turn over a new leaf, and he's trying to be better, and then he kind of, he kind of gets sucked back in, like in The Godfather Three, except he's not Al Pacino screaming. <laughs> Every time I try to get out, they pull me back in. Uh, but it, it does feel like he's trying to do better. And then it's just like my mental state. Man, I don't know. I would, I can't decide. I would put it between pretty sexual and best of the best, to be honest. I really would. I, dude, I can't decide either. So we'll put it to a vote and let the audience decide because I'm right there with you. Like, I really, it's such a good fucking sequel. It's the original requel. Like, they go back 22 years later. He's working on a fucking thing and all that. But I, so I'll put it to a vote and let them decide. But I'll say, you know, I was at, I was, I was out the other night, and like somebody had a, uh, this is a random story, but somebody had one of those weed vape pins, and oh, I yeah. hit it because I was drunk like an idiot, <laughs> and I hit it. Yeah. And you mentioned Al Pacino, dude. I started fucking laughing like Al Pacino. <laughs> I was like, ah! <laughs> like that whole fucking. Hoo <laughs> 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 And you got right. your head all the way up it. <laughs> Like I was, dude. It was bad. Like I was, like I don't know what's going on here. Well, right you didn't do the leave. speech from uh, uh, from uh, Devil's Advocate. Look, <laughs> but don't touch, <laughs> touch. Like you didn't be like, oh my god, like, don't waste my motherfucking time. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking. I bad. will say. Oh. By the way, I I, I, I think we've talked about this before. If they ever did a remake of Psycho. Uh, not the one they did with Vince Vaughn in the early 2000s, which was literally shot for shot the same movie. That's not how you do a remake. I'm just saying. I don't even really like remakes, but that, no, that was, was literally terrible. shot for shot the exact same movie. And Vince Vaughn was actually a good choice. It was just a terribly written script uh, because it was literally just, I mean, what the fuck are you doing? But I, I always thought, to me personally, I think that um, uh, Anthony Perkins looks like andrew garfield if you're gonna do it if you did a psycho oh, remake i, I think that, that you dude. throw yes. yes dude you throw andrew garfield in there you kind of make him kind of like how he was in the show uh, the social network kind of like unhinged kind of like a little bit paranoid a little bit totally anxiety that, driven dude. andrew garfield that. Andrew Garfield as uh, Norman Bates would be a really good fucking movie. Fuck, dude, I really want to watch that. Uh, that that's a gr that's a great casting. I like what you did there, uh, for sure. How do you feel about Final Destination? No, two. I think this one's a little overrated, in my opinion. Just a it's little a little overrated, bit. but I mean, I, I think it's. It, I, I feel like it, it falls in the line between it's fun and pretty sexual because there are some really good moments in that movie. And, mm -hmm. and again, you're coming off a juggernaut like Final Destination without Devin Sawa. I, so I I think honestly, dude, I would go with it's fine because like when you compare them, like well I don't know actually because it's it's maybe as good as Strangers Pray at Night. Yeah, but then when I you get to the end it. though, it it becomes corny as fuck. Like the newborn baby being born that yeah. resets things. Then it gets very much like then it becomes like Amanda Kruger and, and like in Freddy Five and Freddy Four. It's like what the. If a newborn baby is born, it erases all sin. <laughs> and how badly did they fuck over Devin Sawa on that? Like, like he, I don't know. I, I don't know what happened behind the uh, scenes. I just know he didn't show up. No, I think I think a sign fell over and hit him, and they're like, "Oh, he's dead. He didn't make it. He's gone." They, yeah, like, I think on principle alone, we have to put it in. It's fine. Just because, they, just because you know they didn't work out the deal to get Devin Sawa in. Ali Larder yeah. is great, I and mean, she's hot as fuck. But I'm gonna put it's fine. Because I feel like you can't have a sequel to Final Destination yeah. without Devin. You gotta wrap that story up in the movie, in the sequel yeah. with Devin Sawa. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. I think I think it's fine is is the way to go with that. I mean, it has a chance to be pretty sexual because I know it's beloved. The the, the tire log scene, That's like everybody scene, remembers yeah. that. But like, yeah, like the way they did Devin Sawa's character just does not make any fucking sense to me at all. Um, mm. So yeah, it'll go there. Um, so. That leaves us with we don't have very many left, but one that kind of fills that fucking oh. that same vibe. I oh. still know who it's you like showing a picture of a herpy infected dick. <laughs> we, by the way, if you've not subscribed to the fucking Patreon, just the five dollar tier, there's almost a hundred movie uh, commentaries on there and a new one every single month. We did this one two months ago and we had a good time with it. Jay was like, I don't want to fucking watch it. I was like, dude, I, I'm telling you, it's actually better than you remembered. He was like, 
no <laughs> no i, I, I do no. <laughs> no i i hate this fucking movie dude i hate this fucking series i wish it would just die and be killed by a fisherman in the night <laughs> I, I fucking hate i know what you did last summer i mean i enjoy the first one for what it is it's like a again it's the great value brand scream that's what it is sure. and it should have ended troopers. with the first well, yeah, it should have ended with the first one, and and Freddie Prince Jr. Uh, apparently is a cuck, and gets like <laughs> you know uh, Ryan Phillippe is the alpha and tells him I'll fuck your girlfriend in front of you if I want to, and that's the way that it's gonna work, and that's the way the movie should have ended. To make a sequel to this, by the way, Ryan Phillippe being the tough guy at the end of the movie, good God, no one on earth buys that. Oh, I no, put. Uh... Freddie Prince was the tough guy at the end of this one. This is I still know, right? So no, no, I said at the end of this movie, you put yeah, Freddie you said as Ryan the, Felipe though. No, Ryan Phil uh, Ryan F uh, Philippe made him the cuck in the first one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I got you. So, um, man, I'm torn. I could put this and eat a penis all day long, all day long. <laughs> eat that dick, eat it, eat it, and enjoy that semen in your mouth. That salty goodness. But I could, I could, I could maybe be persuaded to put it in. It's fine. I, I will say, for me, it's definitely it's fine because uh, there's hints of possibly pretty sexual. But like, I would go with it's fine personally because, but I think it's better than the first movie personally. I think it had a better location. I mm. think the killer was better. The kills were better. It was more entertaining. And the locale, like the tropical location, the tornado yeah. going around, Jeffrey Combs, like Jeff Combs. No, great actors. Thing. Yeah, great actors. Yeah, so I would go, it's fine. But if you want to put it to a vote, we can. Well, uh, here's the I, thing. I, here's the thing. I No, I because I, I said I would flirt with the line. I'll put it, like, I will put it in, it's fine. But I will point out. I'm not happy about it. No, I'm not happy about it. It's like, <laughs> you know, going to a concert that you don't want to go to, but your wife insists. <laughs> but... <laughs> Oh, we got a lot of it's fine actually. That's, but, that's but I will say, I will one. say this. Uh, one of the main things I always thought that was so fucking stupid in that movie is like, why did this killer, this fisherman killer, go to all the elaborate lengths to pay for, you know, what must have been a fortune to set up? We're gonna go to a goddamn deserted island when he gonna kill these cocksuckers on their college campus? Like, yeah, you guys already copied Scream 2 in every fucking way possible. You might as well just go the full Monty. It was probably they probably feel how like Scream probably feels like we do on like some of the Halloween update stuff. It's like stop fucking copying <laughs> me, man. Just get yeah. your own life. Yeah. <laughs> or like or was Rockstar is like, you know what's sad about you, little man? He's like, you don't even live your own dreams. You fantasize about somebody else's life. Oh, yeah. We're yeah, in somebody yeah. else's face. Was that um, in Rockstar? Oh, yeah, it was in Rockstar. Yeah, yeah. the brother. Rockstar. Yeah, fucking, another great movie you guys gotta watch. Get out of my room. So that, um, by the way, that's uh, Mark Wahlberg's greatest uh, film of all time, Rockstar. I would agree with that. And I, yeah, and I well, put that over fear. It's a better movie, but, but I put like, it over fear. I put it over fear. I do. Well, fear's in there, dude. We should do a commentary of fear on the Patreon. Well, that I'm, I'm saying, uh, but if Mark Wahlberg's total performance, Rockstar is probably his best performance ever, because he goes yeah. from like drunk, sad, hilarious, uh, you know, regretting. And then fear, he's just one character. I feel like he's better in, in Rockstar. That's true. Yeah. Um, so that's tough. Dude, we should do a. Do we should at some point we should just do a Mark Wahlberg movie tier list. <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> Get them all in there because I like I have two movies. Get them fucking all, dude. Maybe three. Uh, Child of the Corn says more of a blonde action movie bombshell. Patty Patsy Kinsit and Lethal Weapon Two, the South African receptionist. Or Jordan Tate in Under Siege, OG, both. So you remember in Lethal mm -hmm. Weapon 2, she was the hot girl that was in the grocery store that he picks up and he takes her back to his trailer where he eats dog biscuits and they have sex. But then she gets killed immediately by the South African bad guys. Um, remember, she was the short blonde hair, super fucking I mean, hot. Maybe uh, <laughs> they drown her and then Riggs gets fucking pissed off. And I don't know, everyone. man. All these white girls look alike. I don't know. <laughs> How dare you? How I don't know, dare man. you? Um, what are you, Jada Pickett Smith? <laughs> man, you ask a racist question, man. <laughs> I don't know. I, I like. Uh, I think I know who you're talking about when you say um, Jordan Tate in Under Siege, the birthday cake girl. Dude, yeah, comes out. Happy She's birthday. yeah. I'm gonna go with her because that's the only white girl I remember with big titties. I'm definitely a hundred percent going Patty Kins at Lethal Weapon 2 because she was smoking hot. And and also the girl that comes out of the cake, 
uh play girl playboy model or whatever i think but like she had that super short yeah hair. well I'm i can not, overlook sure that for the perfect tits that she had when she opened up her fucking you like, can't deny that that's true her jacket that's true I will. So, I will go, Patty. I'll throw Lethal Weapon Two some love there. That's a. It's a, it's a better question than you thought it was. Yes. That's, that's a. Whole it's a great. It's a great question, though. It's a great question. Uh, <laughs> about Michael Parton says, "I hope you guys got Jaws Two in the tier list eight because Michael is such a fucking awesome dude, and we love him Michael's so much. We'll add good it guy. just for fucking you, man." Um, Jaws Two. Uh, I don't remember fuck all about this movie except for I was. I don't either. By I feel it. like th- I feel like this. This should go to. The directly vote. to the audience yeah because i don't remember enough to be fair i do remember to, being entertained there was like they were like close uh, to the dock in one scene and like i i remember it slightly but, but look at that look at that look at the subline jaws two less dense <laughs> the la murder two party <laughs> so they're, like, dense, they're saying less dense to your body and then party <laughs> it looks like it's asking you do you want to party <laughs> uh yeah I, I yeah to be fair um well and mike said it as well i i can't be 100 percent accurate in in giving a rating of that movie because i don't right. remember shit about jaws 2. so i'll put it to the poll but for the last poll we did psycho 2 best of the best or pretty sexual pretty sexual wins 55 percent to 45 percent. that's a that's a close vote that's a good that's one pretty, so. it's pretty solid so psycho and i can agree with that i think we both can like it, it you know what chance to be best but, of best, but I'll be a little controversial here. I will say, uh, well, it wouldn't be controversial, but I will say Psycho 3 was pretty sexual as well. Psycho is one of those things that they don't have a terrible movie. Like, Psycho 4 uh, was pretty bad. Remake. It's Psycho 4 wasn't great, but it wasn't like it wouldn't. I would never put that in the best of the best or pretty sexual, but Psycho 3 with the soundtrack alone is fucking phenomenal. Yeah, but yeah, the remake yeah. is total garbage. But yeah, uh, so let me put this vote in there. Best of the best, and I'm gonna take a PP real quick, uh, and then we will I, we will I, finish I. things off. Um, as I put this in here, I'm gonna put this in you guys real quick. Just give me just one second. Put this in. Uh, here. Just tell me where you are on on chat. So uh, we need to do that. Uh, I shall. That the Jaws two vote is abound, and we are my friend at. Um, we shouldn't be too far off from being caught up. Uh, we are at Joe X Rock at nine fifty one right. p.m. Okay. Uh, yeah, I got it. I'm here. I'm say, here, Joe. Okay, I'll be right back. Right back for you. <laughs> I will see you soon. I'll see you real soon. Uh, Joe X Rock asks, more underrated: The Burning or Rawhead Rex? I've seen both those flicks, Joe, but I can't give you a definitive answer. I know I, I did enjoy Rawhead Rex. I do remember that movie pretty well. I don't, I mean, I, like when I say enjoy, I, like I enjoyed it for what it was. I don't think I thought it was like some kind of goddamn, you know, Academy Award winning, holy shit, are they going to get, you know, the, the statue to go home? But I do remember liking that movie, but. Yes. Um, we'll go down here. Make sure we're caught up. Oh, there's someone here. What are we doing here? Oh, Norris says, "Hey, Mike and Jay, sent the same super chat twice. Sorry, love you guys. Been drinking vodka all afternoon and watching Friday the Thirteenth. Cheers, ha <laughs> ha, dude. That'll do it every time. That'll do it. But that's awesome. That sounds like a great day on a Saturday evening. Let's watch Friday the Thirteenth marathons. Have a good fucking time." Drink some vodka and hope we don't get killed by an axe wielding maniac because we're virgins. I'm not. <laughs> uh, some people could be. Um, Michael Part says, I love both of you and want both of you. That's good to know, Michael. And it's fair. And that's what we're here about. We're talking about equality. Okay. You can have both of us, not just one. Okay. But I appreciate that, Michael. Thank you so much. Uh, let's go down here. Let's go down here. Uh, what's oh, Vanessa? Hey, Vanessa. She says, just want to say on this holy weekend, I am thankful for you both. See your beautiful 
cells in a couple of months. Also, shout out, my grandfather is 113 this week. Third oldest in the week. Holy shit, Vanessa. That's fucking awesome. I didn't, I had no idea. And I've met you face to face. You didn't tell me such secrets. That's awesome. That's so cool. I, and we're very thankful for you as well, Vanessa. Vanessa is, is such a sweet, awesome girl. We're very happy to have her in our lives. And that is amazing that your grandfather is 113 years old this week. And on top of that, third oldest in the, in the, in the world. So we hope the other two die soon so he can be number one. No, <laughs> we shouldn't wish that. But thank you so much, Vanessa. Love you. Um, I don't know how to say your name. Tref Lemedit with a question mark. Tref Lemedit. Tray Film Edit. Yep, that's what it was. Tray Film Edit. Question, uh, exclamation. Tray Film Edit. What's up, you beautiful... Uh, yeah, I, I'm stupid. I'm sorry. Um, what's up, you beautiful bastards? If you had to choose one movie to watch for the first time again... And one movie you regret watching, what are they? That's a great question. It's a very thoughtful question. I think um, one movie to watch for the first time again, for me, and I'll let Mike answer for him as well. Uh, I think the first movie I would love to watch without any, you know, spoilers, the first time ever seeing it. And, and if I got to be there in 1984 when it was brand new, didn't know what it was about, but just kind of based on the trailers, Ghostbusters. I think watching Ghostbusters for the first time on screen would be amazing. I think it would be awesome. I don't, I, 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 I'd be mind blown. I think it would be just awesome. Um, and then regret watching what are they for me? Um, uh, I regret watching, uh, man. It's got to be Spider-Man 3 <laughs> with uh, Tobey Maguire. Man, I, I had such fucking high hopes when Spider-Man 3 came out. Uh, you know, they were going to introduce Venom and, you know, Sandman was in it. And I was like expecting the, the actual cool ass symbiotic suit. And then they just had the basic Sam Raimi suit painted black. I'm like, what the cheap shit is this? And then you cast Topher fucking Grace. As your goddamn venom, what the fuck you smoking crack? What the fuck did you just do? I was pissed <laughs> as shit when I saw Topher fucking Grace as Eddie Brock. I mean, oh, you couldn't cool. find, you couldn't find a less intimidating guy unless you were drunk, blindfolded, and threw a dart to find the most less intimidating guy, and you chose that motherfucker. Man, it would be that. Uh, so, uh, how do you say it? Trey, Trey Film Edit says, and I just answer my, I'm going to go pee myself. He says, what's up, you beautiful bastards? If you had to choose one movie to watch for the first time again and one movie you regret watching, what are they? I picked uh, mm. Ghostbusters and then I picked uh, uh, Spider-Man 3. What time were you, What time stamp was that? That's uh, 10.07. 10.07, okay. Uh, all right, cool. All right. Uh, man, that's a tough question. That's a tough question. Also, I want to say, I do see Vanessa in there. I love your fucking face so much, Vanessa. I can't stand it. Um, we're thankful for you, and I cannot wait to see you guys in June. Holy fucking shit, 113. God damn, that's awesome. Some people say, by the way, that like, oh, I don't want to live to be old. Like, I, I fucking do. Like, I want to live to be old as shit. You know why? Because I want to be old to where, like, I have no responsibilities. Like, you can't ask me to take out the trash. You can't ask me to get the mail. You can't ask me for shit. Hand me a fucking Xbox remote and my inhaler or, like, whatever, and just let me sit and be fucking old. I want to live to 129. Like, I'm in. I'm in for it. So, hey, congratulations. And we love you, Vanessa, by the way. Uh, I just caught that one on my way down. But uh, as far as Trey Film Edit, <laughs> you do you look like you could have played bass for green day back in the 90s i love it um that is a great fucking question uh movie for the first time again i i'll i'll i'll, I'll go you know i would go scream technically but like i will go empire records just because that was such a that was such a nostalgic movie for me and it is rex manning day still 
Um, so I will go scream slash Empire Records on that one. Empire Records is so funny. Like uh, the way I watched that, my dad went out and rented movies at Blockbuster and he, he never really did this, but like he rented us a movie on his own whim because uh, we used to like fucking like, Can we please go to Blockbuster, please, 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 please. And I would have to like get him to like rent Wayne's World or shit like that. He'd be like, come on, really? I'm like, yes. But like he brought Empire Records uh, to me and my sister and like, I don't know if she liked it or not, but like I fucking adored it and loved it. So that was a special moment for me. That and Seven. Watching Seven for the first time blew my fucking mind. That's kind of what started my deep love of movies. Uh, Seven was one of those. When it ended, it ended and I went, I need fucking to find more movies like that. That just blew my mind. So that was kind of three. But um, movie I regret watching? I'll just go with the three movies I walked out on. Um. <sighs> I'll go with the three movies I walked out on. And the only three movies I can remember ever walking out on in my life was one stigmata went to see that on my birthday. I know a lot of people love stigmata, but I went to see it on my birthday and just fucking hated it. I don't know why I was like, this fucking sucks dick. And I was angry. So I left the fog remake would be my number one answer. Selma Blair. I love Selma Blair, man. was that movie a piece of shit? Um, I walked out on that one. And then the last movie I walked out on, I believe was premium rush uh joseph gordon levitt me and jay were drinking watching the movie and we're like this motherfucker's on a fucking bicycle what is this shit why is michael shannon doing this piece of shit movie uh but my number one answer will be the fog remake god that was ass wasn't it that was pure butt crack mcgee like taco bell wouldn't serve that on a taco child of the corn thanks so much says i still know what you did last summer jennifer love hewitt the tanning bed scene i know just a beautiful beautiful woman and she was far hotter in that movie than she was in the original no doubt about it um mercurio 80 it's good to see you, man says sorry i'm late just got out of whacking watching uh watching super mario bros but i brought tequila <laughs> uh it was so funny we were sitting with uh my wife's little brother and we we're sending him off to the marines this is probably gonna be the last time we see him for a while and he was <laughs> he's drinking tequila uh, it's a tequila in one glass and, and that new Sprite starry shit in the other and was chasing it. And I was like, that's fucking gross, man. Why are you drinking that right now? Um, I can only do tequila in small doses because everyone's had that one night on tequila where you got two tequila drunk and it made you sick and you swore off tequila. Mine was at this crazy fucking house party. Our friends were house sitting for this really rich guy who used to win. Like we go to this fucking house, right? And this guy has pictures of himself all over us. It's a mansion and she's house sitting and we, she threw a huge party and he's got pictures of him on the cover of Newsweek winning races and shit. And they had fucking pool tables. They had like a thousand rooms. They had a garage that was nothing but liquor just all over the walls and we just got oh my god disgusting drunk i i was so drunk i was i was i was like 17 i was giving people a beer bottle i was like break this over my fucking head because i can take it and they were like trying to and i remember they hit me in the head with a couple and it wouldn't break and i was like god damn it i woke up with like bruises on my arm it was terrible but like tequila you got to be careful with it that's all i'm saying are mike's you talking about this? mike's talking about the initiation in the kumite <laughs> it's the only way you can get there one of the wildest. Once you of my once you life. step out of the alley into the sunlight, it's time to protect your nuts, guys. <laughs> that night, I got so tequila drunk, I got butt naked. I went in the bathroom. I was like, <laughs> I took all my clothes off, got butt ass naked, and started running around the party. Going, <laughs> dude, the <laughs> the funniest story people. that I remember that you see like that I, now. No, dude, I I think the funniest story. Um, well, there's two, but I I think. Uh, <laughs> Dude, I remember this shit. I remember it was so fucking funny. I don't know why, because I laugh every time I think about it. It's when we went to Cody's bachelor party, oh, and uh, Mike was fucking hammered. Me and my was, brother almost got into a fight, and Mike... <laughs> I, was the I, dude, I was the drunkest I've ever been in my life. I know, dude. That was shit was so fucking funny, because uh, I wanted to go home. I had had my fill of the alcohol and strippers for that evening, so I wanted to go home, and my brother got really <laughs> bad. And he thought that I was like disrespecting him in some way. Like he got like Tony Montana on me. He was like, you're going to disrespect me. Like it was so fucking stupid. And Mike was so fucking hammered and drunk in the back seat. He was both of our, our, our best friend. <laughs> like I remember the window, like it was a power window. You rolling it down. Like you were like goddamn Wilson Fisk in Kingpin. <laughs> and, like I remember the window coming down like this, like, like me and Cody were like having this, like we were going to fight. And then we look up and go, and I was like, 
Man, don't fight, y'all. You're all brothers, man. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then I found out later after I went home that he uh passed out on the on the fucking streets <laughs> in Cyan. Uh, well, yeah. it was in Lexington, Kentucky, but Mike apparently thought that his house was only five minutes away and decided to leave the comfort of the home that he was staying at and drunk as fuck walking on the road in the median and then passing out somewhere and not getting arrested, which I thought was miracle of God has been upon Dude, you. This is like, I must have been like 22, 23. So it was like 152 years ago. But like, I, yeah, I thought I was sitting there and I was way too drunk and I was like, I just want to be home in my own bed. So I like, I waited till nobody was looking and I took off running down the street thinking I could just like make it to my own house. And I was like 45 minutes away from my house. So I just started walking down the street and there's all these horse farms. And I like, eventually I knew I was lost and I just went, fuck, I'm tired. And I took off my shirt and used it as a pillow and just laid down in the fucking ditch next to the street. Woke up the next morning with people on their way to work. Like honking their horns at me. Somehow nobody called me. I don't know why that's so funny to me, dude. <laughs> that, was so fucking bad, dude. that was I never I should have fucking died that night. That was the worst I, of all time. I, I could just see it. I like I swear to God, if I had been there that evening, I wouldn't even have stopped him. If I had just seen him running <laughs> at a fence to jump over, I, I let him go, I, bro. Dude, and I then, got so uh, fucking then, lucky. But, but then people were like all around like, oh, it was like so serious. I'm like, no, he didn't die. Like I felt like that dude from uh from uh what was it um uh, uh hangover he's like but did you die like <laughs> I don't think like he didn't die and he did get arrested but they were like dude it was serious like it was fucking serious I'm like no dude he didn't get fucking he didn't die when I woke up the next morning I woke up I put my shirt on I was like oh god and I walked to the edge of like it was daylight and i walked to the edge of the street where like the main traffic was and this is like a main hub yeah. of lexington so there was like tons of traffic i didn't even know where i was it was like armstrong mill road i just sat against the traffic <laughs> light and i saw like them coming in the and i didn't have a cell phone or nothing i saw them coming in the fucking jeep and they're like dude what the fuck <laughs> yeah. like, dude i would love to have been there i would have loved to have been there because i would have left my ass off if i've been in the car because they were trying to treat it like it was a goddamn moment from the real world like, dude, what the fuck, bro? You could have died, dude. You could have got arrested. I would have laughed my ass off if I if, uh, if I were in the car to pick him up. But the fact that you didn't get picked up at all, like there is nobody. I don't know if that means that Kentucky is just like less caring than New York. I'm sure there were people passing your dead body looking ass on the road. And they were like, fuck that asshole. I'll just yeah. let the fucking local news report on it. And like not uh, saying anything. But the fact that. Because, by the way, if you guys are, I know you guys are know, but Lexington, Kentucky, uh, the big roadway for us, like the one that goes like, it, it's the one that most people use. It's called Man of War. So it's a very frequented uh, traffic situation. Uh, Mike passed out on the side of that road and like, nobody like, gave like a, a fuck. Half mile away from it. Yeah, and nobody cared. Country. Nobody stopped. Nobody cared. <laughs> like look at that dirty old bum oh, he looks like reese so. from terminator one he probably put on a bum's pants and didn't wear underwear it like, all started I don't wanna... we went we went out to dinner before we went to party and i ordered i was like it's your fucking bachelor party man i <laughs> you ordered got a some... whole pitcher of like vodka and grapefruit shit and everybody's like i don't drink that shit so i was like i'll drink it and then we went to <laughs> another bar and i was drinking fucking vegas bombs and i was like woo yeah. and then Dude, we got I... kicked out of a strip club and then you no, all that, got that... cody that was your fault because it was my fault. Well, here's the thing. I I was very, 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 very much drunk in that whole situation. But Mike was like goddamn Ted Nugent drunk. I was Robert uh, Downey Jr. in the old. Yeah, he was Robert Downey Jr. before he got saved <laughs> by Jesus. I, and and I he was like, hey, man, I pay this. I, like, this is what I heard because I was drunk as fuck, too. So I, maybe I heard it wrong, but he was like, I thought he said, I paid for this girl to give you a, a lap dance for free or some shit. Like, or, or just like, I, you, they're going to give you a lap dance. So I went in and I got the lap dance. My wiener didn't get hard because I was drunk and yeah, I had whiskey dick. So it was just not <laughs> happening. And then she was like weird about it. She she put my face in her boobies and I was like, there was nothing there. Nothing it happened. Like, and I was like, yeah, I was like, whatever. I don't know. You have small boobies. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't even like hot. Like, And then and she was like very disappointed. And so I left and she's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I was trying to leave. And she's like, who's paying me? I was like, my friend, my friend said he's going to pay. Like, you, you go over there. And so I've, I was trying to leave the fucking club. 
And I left, and then this whole controversy happened where Mike was like, I was just joking. I'm not paying like $70 for the fucking <laughs> lap dance. What the fuck? Are you crazy? You crack so work? We, we, and, walked in, we walked into the thing, and as soon as we sat down, I was like, that guy wants a fucking lap dance. And the girl was just happened to be standing there. She, she was like, she just took him by the hand. And I was yeah. like, I never said I was going to pay for it. I just said, that guy wants a lap dance. Dude, you told me you were one. like drunk in my face. You were like, oh, you, dude, it's on me. You had credit cards. I didn't even have a credit card. I was point. married. I, was like, I couldn't else? use it. <laughs> so I was like, that guy wants one. And she takes him to the back. And then the next thing I know, she comes up. She's like, you got my money? I was like, are you Steve? I was like, who are you? <laughs> and then the next thing I know, I turned around and there was like eight dudes in yeah. suits, like shoving us out of the fucking show. And I was like, what happened? And someone's like, you got to pay her. And I was like, for what? Yeah, I didn't even like, do nothing. Yeah, dude, I bad. mean, to be honest, in that private room, Nothing was worth $70 what she did because she knew I was like, <laughs> I was sick, drunk, and she was just like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> she wasn't doing anything like it was not yeah. that, that that shit was worth like fucking $20 at best. So I was and, like, and I didn't know. And then, and then I just ran across the street to McDonald's to call my <laughs> wife at that time to come pick me up. And she was a slut. And she was like. Oh my god, you drunk? You strip club? Like, yeah, bitch! <laughs> Spit the dick out of your mouth and come get me. Because she was a whore. And then we I, didn't they, find they, that they, part out till later. Obviously, yeah, that was later. And then the whole thing with uh, the me and Cody almost getting in a fight. But that was the first. <laughs> that was the the funniest thing. And then the second funniest thing was when Mike ate the the hot chip, and he, <laughs> and he told me he was butt naked on the fucking uh, toilet, and he was oh, like okay. shitting. That shit was. Dude, I don't know why, because I could just imagine. Like, because you're going in there, you ate the, you know, he did the, the, um, the, the, the Pocky hot chip challenge. And yeah. it's, on, it's one of, our, it's one of the older uh, YouTube videos. You guys can watch that. And then he goes in and he tells me, he's like, dude, I, like, I was sitting on the toilet. <laughs> like, I started taking my shirt off, my underwear. <laughs> and by the end of it, he was like sitting there, like, goddamn Kyle Reese or Arnold dude. in Terminator, butt naked, <laughs> crying. <laughs> You left. I was. I went to sleep on the couch, and like I thought it was all fine. I was like, I ate the hot chip. <laughs> I went to sleep, and then I woke up, and I was like, Doom. like your eyes open, and like, oh god. I like ran to the fucking bathroom, and like literally, I, I had to take all. I was so sweaty, I had to take all my clothes off, and I was just sitting there. I didn't actually throw up, but like I was holding it while I was shit. I was like, oh, oh, oh god. And it was dude. I thought I was gonna shit. That's why I don't know why it makes me laugh. So much. <laughs> I can imagine you going and sitting on the toilet with your sleep clothes on. <laughs> like slowly unpeeling yourself <laughs> you're so hot you're trying to take off every article of clothing that you have yeah. and you wish you could peel your skin off to <laughs> I, actually, I actually thought i was gonna like i was like i think i just shit out like a liver like i, I thought i was gonna die that night don't oh do not man that's so funny to be hot chip you guys don't do it uh but anyway <laughs> yeah dude that, that all all mercurio said was hey man i watched super mario bros and have tequila and then 25 minutes later <laughs> we yeah i heard mario uh, brothers is really good <laughs> <laughs> as far as um what movie was it so as far as jaw two jaws two goes um it's fine wins the day uh ah. best of the best 12 percent uh, some people Good really stuff. like that fucking Good movie. Stuff. Pretty sexual. Twenty eight. Eat a PP. Got thirteen. It's Ooh. fine. Is where this bitch goes into the it's fine category and fills in get the down last there, shark. Part. It's fine. What? Get down there, shark. We don't yeah, hear you. Get, you. you get your big mouth down there, and then so there's no more it's fine capabilities left. But we don't have many movies left anyway. Um, as far as the movies go, we still have. Oh, here's a big one. Here's a man. Big one, man. You don't need this to bring, bring you, you know, you're bringing thunder and dynamite mm -hmm. to a conversation that we just mm -hmm. know we, we we're not ready to discuss this yet. Okay? Technically, a part two. Technically, so I mean, kind of. For me, it's pretty sexual, but for a lot I, of people, it's not. Well, given the fact that it's fonts filled up makes it real easy, but like I agree with you that it is sexual because. Looking back on it now, and you take away all the preamble, because we thought Halloween Kills was going to be like maybe the greatest fucking horror sequel of all time, yeah. but like the way we were hearing about it and all that. So, like, but at the end of the day, you got Michael on a fucking rampage, mm -hmm. one of the gnarliest Michaels we ever got, doing the fucking firefighter awesome scene shit. alone. Yeah. So while there's things in it, Evil Dies Tonight, people don't like. It's still pretty fucking sexual, in my opinion, as well. That's where she. Yeah, because I, I feel like they also delivered on the promise 
They, you know, yes. they were like, you know, Halloween Kills is going to be a very, very violent Michael. So we got that. So it's yeah, very sexual, 100%. very sexual. Yeah, I think that movie is going to it's going to be looked at more fonder after time. I think, you so. know, like it's going to stand the test. I feel like it's going to be I, I feel I, I swear I feel like it's going to be like a Halloween six curse of Michael Myers type of movie. I just do. Mm -hmm. 100% man like it's going to be appreciated in its own goddamn way uh what else we got here um oh here's one insidious chapter two man I don't know I mean I would put it in like it's fine because but it's filled up and I but I don't feel comfortable putting it in pretty sexual I I just don't I, it, it's tough but like when i, I like it i mean i do like the movie i mean i just i don't know if it's pretty sexual i just don't know I, I i'll just i'll just i'll just eat the bullet on this one i'll say it's pretty sexual since we're, we're at okay a, i'll a, give it to you then week. i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and pass the token yeah I'll, I'll, and the reason the reason i'll do that is it is the best insidious sequel so far and it's the only one that follows the original family that's true um, and they're going to do that again in five. So maybe that jumps this, but it's got some pretty scary scenes in it. It's a good time. I got no qualms with it whatsoever. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe not as sharp as you'd like, but pretty damn good movie. I'll go with but I, I, But I, by the way, I would never put that in Eat a Dick. I don't think it's never. that bad. No, it's pretty good. But I, I feel like it well. works with It's Fine and Pretty Sexual. But I do love, um, you know, they have some really um, <clears throat> scary moments in that movie. And Lynn Shea is awesome. Yeah. In that film. Yeah. I, would, I wouldn't PP it being an it's fine, but I think Pretty Sexual is a solid place for yeah. it to go. How about old Hellbound Hellraiser 2? I feel like we're going to have a difference of opinion on this one. I do. What Man. do you think, it's like that. It's like that kid that you said that would never do anything with their life, and they come back home, and they did something with their life, but they became a porn star. And you're like, yeah, you did something. Good, though. You made money. You did something, but... You kind of nasty. You kind of gross. You a nasty bitch, and I kind of like it. But you kind of nasty. I won't ever admit that in church. Um, <clears throat> I feel like what Hellbound Hellraiser Two could have been is is significantly less than what we got on film. I feel like uh, they could have really done an, a really amazing job with the sequel. <clears throat> You do get to see Leviathan. You do get to see um, uh, a little bit a different side to the Cenobites. What I fucking hated was when they made them human and they got their ass kicked by um, the doctor in like two At minutes. I thought it was dumb as fuck. Yeah. I hated that part. Uh, I think it was kind of garbagey. I think it was a disrespect to... They were already building the Cenobites to be like the best of the best type of demons like and pinhead was the general and then immediately gets his ass kicked by the new recruit in mm -hmm. in, in dr Chenard. Mm -hmm. i that's why i fucking and i hate it dude i don't know what it is i hate it watching them turn into humans and, and like literally all pinhead did was like here got some chains i got some chains we're gonna protect you. Ooh, and it's done. <laughs> it was like the quickest fight in history. I mean, it was like a goddamn staged fight with um, Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, in Japan. Yeah. I I put it like it's fine. That's I'm, that's where I okay. put it. It's fine. We're not we're not gonna disagree then because I think it's uh, yeah I think it's just fine as well. Like it has its moments, but I think it's a little bit overrated personally. I think when they went to Leviathan and all that shit, I thought it was kind of. It was it was it, yeah. it was a, a little hard to follow, a little not not tight, not well done. It kind of lost the tightness that the original had. Um, tight, just one more time. It had Wait. great moments in it, but again, I didn't love the end of it. I, I'm gonna put it in its find as well. I'm just gonna make it really, really tiny, and then I'm gonna put it right here in this corner. <laughs> yeah, well, that's fine. It that actually works. But by the way, I, I was gonna say, um, I I also want to point out, like, it's got some of the best dialogue in the movie because uh, they let Doug Bradley kind of go off with some, like, True. awesome, like, you know, he's like, your suffering will be legendary even in hell. Like, they have, like, awesome dialogue, but I'm at, like, it's one of those movies, like, man, I wish there was just something more. Like, I wish there was something that you guys were doing. Like, man, it's so close. Like, they were so close to doing something really epic, and then it's like... Mm -hmm. They took their foot off the gas. I don't know. I could argue in the same way. Like, I know we put it in best of the best, but I could argue that Hellraiser Hellbound in the same way weirdly feels like more of an expansion pack to the original movie than its mm -hmm. own 
film. I could say the same thing about Halloween too, but like I feel like it feels more of an expansion pack than its own film, and it's not nearly as good as the original film. Well, I mean, so. I, I don't know, if, I don't know who said that, but I, I, Carpenter or somebody like the Hellraiser one and two is really one movie. Like if mm-hmm. you if, if you look at it, it's like one movie. Then it's really hard to break it down. But I mean, dude, I mean, to be honest, like I, I feel like they had such such a awesome character design in Hellraiser One. They had such a great story with Kirsty and the relationship with the Cenobites. And then they kind of did this. I don't I don't know what even to call it. I don't know if it was a cop out. I don't know. I mean, they, they either they didn't want to go the full Monty in and 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 like really dive into it, or they were just like Let's just make this a Hollywood type of movie. Special yeah, effects, just, horror, and that's it. They did too much. They they, they you no. smoked yourself retarded, as they would say. It's a movie quote. Don't don't judge me for saying that. Dante like retarded people as well. <laughs> says even stop being racist. Sydney <laughs> Prescott, Kirsty Carton, Sam Carpenter, Mary Fuck Kill go. Oh, that's tough. Woo mm. me. Sydney Prescott, Kirsty Cotton, Sam Carpenter, Mary Fuck. Sam kill. Carpenter, who's that one? Uh, Sam Carpenter is uh, Melissa Barrera uh, in Scream 5 and Scream 6. Oh. She's the one that gets the stabby stab on at the end. She's Billy's daughter. Okay, well, I'm not a huge Scream fan. I mentioned that like 500 times. But I'll say I will kill Sam Carpenter. I will um, fuck Sydney because why not? <laughs> why you say like, I'll fuck because <laughs> she's hot as fuck and, and you know she did that shit in wild things wild things yeah There's and that. then i'm gonna marry kirsty because i feel like kirsty had to deal with a lot worse shit than sydney or sam carpenter Kirstie in her needs life a good man yeah she needs a good man she needs like someone that's gonna she's be nice. like not a not a good puss in boots with around mm-hmm. her she and she's also that kind of girl that is like gonna take control if she needs to and you're gonna be perfectly comfortable if she has to do that so it's yeah. going to be marrying Kirsty Cotton. I don't want to kill any of them. I'll say that off the off the get. I, I don't want to kill any of them. I really don't. Um, but I'm going to have to kill Kirsty. I don't want to. I My don't want to. My gut. But there's something about Sam Carpenter when she stabs people that just gets me fucking going, man. So I'm going to say uh, uh, Sam Carpenter, and I'm going to say, uh, well, no, you know what? I'm flipping this. I'm flipping this. You guys are going to be surprised. I'm gonna kill Sidney Prescott. Um, uh, yes, 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 I am. And here's why. It's just you know, um, I'm gonna marry. I'm gonna. I'm gonna marry uh, Kirsty because, like, yes. like we said, yes, John. Like we said, you know, she she deserves to have yes, a happy John. ending. She's been through a lot. Neff Campbell, she's look. She's not a very good spouse. Like, like, look at how she treated Derek at the end of Scream Two. You know what I'm saying? And like, I just there's she would be just way too like. She's been through too much with like you know the ex boyfriend situation. So I, I yeah I would have to do that. I do I love Sydney Prescott, but in this situation where we're talking about matters of the heart, she's got to go. I think Kirstie's also a tough chick, man. Yeah, like she'd be like that chick that would like defend you in a bar fight. <laughs> they all could, to be fair. Well, I mean, they I all, mean, yeah, maybe. No, I don't know. I don't. I think Sydney would run out and call the cops and maybe yeah, but Gail. Sydney's- Sydney's way too good at arguing too. He'd be like, "Yeah, well, why don't you want to go see my parents?" And she, but then, like, but when she got she slapped by me. a fucking redneck at the bar, she'd cry and call Gail. Oh but, no, like Kirsty would, would like, ass, but Kirsty would be like, Roman "Bitch, I, I fucking came out like I faced demons with chains. You ain't got nothing." <laughs> I think we, I think I, I support both of our answers on that. I really do. Charles of course says Hellbound mattress scene next level horror. Yeah, that, man, that that that's some of the grossest shit ever. When they took that dude. That like was scratching his skin because he was like a schizophrenic and he thought bugs were on him and they put him on the bed so that he could like make the blood. Dude, that's like some of the neck. I would, yeah, I would. Even if NECA released a figure where that the bed was like, I wouldn't buy it because that shit's gross. <laughs> mm-hmm. That shit's fucking. That makes me very uncomfortable to watch. That I don't know why. Like, yeah, when that- she comes out with like the skinless Julia Ooh. and she like pulls him down and she's like. Like trying to fuck him, kind of, and then like mm-hmm. she sucks his his soul out through his wiener. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't like it, Richard. I don't like it one bit. I, I, yeah. Um. Okay. So finishing up here, the last ones that we have. Make sure we get all these that we have on the list here. Um. Uh. We got these. We got those. We got these. We got those. We got these. We got those. Um. Did we get them all? Like we, only, we have two left. Just two oh. left. 
Perfect timing. Actually, we we managed this perfectly. Um, paranormal activity too. I think it's this pretty is one where the it had the yeah it had the dog in it had the baby crate had that stuff going on had yeah. the, the 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 lady doing the incense. Um, yep, <clears throat> I like that they took it back to the eighties and they have the uh, the camera that's on a like on a on a swiveling um, fan or, or whatever I don't know what you call it like the fan that swivels around um oscillating an oscillating fan oscillating fans are good yeah, yeah with the uh <laughs> thumbs up for being drunk and remembering that <laughs> word uh, <laughs> uh but yeah they have like a, a cam a quarter it's a four syllable like, one yeah an oscillating Silver. fan dude i actually thought it was really well done i i think the paranormal activity too was actually pretty sexual i don't think yep. it's best of the best but it's pretty sexual yeah, it's the, the ending of it is the best when shit goes fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my god, uh, totally pretty sexual for me. I, I think the Paranormal Activity series gets a bad rap. I think there's a lot of really good movies in that franchise, uh, for me personally. Well, um, um the one that we always uh we always dote on is um the Mark marked ones. ones. The marked yeah, ones that never gets here. the credit that it deserves. But I had a good time watching almost every single one of those movies. I really yep. did. So uh and then finally the ghost dimension was one. hard, but it was still pretty fun. Yeah, yeah, Ghost Mission was probably maybe one of the worst ones yeah. for sure. Uh, last one. Last Ooh. one of the night, my friends. Old Baghead. Riding on a plane. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Running down the fucking... That looks, like, uh, uh, that looks like the IRS showing up to your house. Like, we're going to audit you. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be best of the best for me. I it's am Jason, in no man. place. It's Jason. To disagree with you, I think that this is best of the best. Because Baghead Jason... Other than a moment in the remake, has never had his due. Everybody forgets about old Baghead. Baghead Jason's great, man. It's better than the first film, no doubt about it. Better 100%. than many of the sequels. He was he was crazy. He was a lunatic. It had some of the best characters. It had the the wheelchair dude who he's all we've always loved. I love it. Had the, I'm gonna give it to you straight about Jason. Like mm -hmm. to me, you go back and you think about the Friday the 13th. Like where do you want to start? Like what's the first Friday the 13th movie? And I go know, part two. Part two. Yeah, yeah, I know if you're completed, you're going to start at the beginning for sure. But like for me, Jason's story really begins in part two. Like I yeah. think that that's the fucking one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's best of the best, my friend. Well, you know, and again, I know like what you, you were mentioning purist and they're going to say, well, what about uh, Friday the 13th part one and Pamela? The thing about Friday the 13th one, it was a great film. Don't get me wrong. I, I, you know, you had Kevin Bacon getting an arrow through the, the neck. Of course, you're going to love that. But at the same time, once you see the movie and once you under, you know, and someone's coming into it already knowing who Jason is, Jason has become the fucking rock in the WWE at this point, right? Like, you just want to see the rock. Um, you have to, you don't even have to really go through Friday the 13th Part One to get to the goodness of the series because I, don't they do a recap? Uh, in part two, oh, I think yeah, they do yeah, a yeah. they do a so. recap uh, in a, in a better fashion than that piece of shit eat a dick Exorcist two. Uh, they do it like five minutes and then you're caught up. So the thing is, once you've seen the Exorcist one, and I'm sure it, at the time and during its day, it, you know it was it was a magical experience because you you didn't know, but you got to kind of play with it now where Jason has become this you know phenom like Hulk Hogan or The Rock or whatever. I personally, if Blockbuster were still around and I had never seen a Friday the 13th movie ever, but I knew who Jason was, and they're like, where, where do I start? They'd be like, Friday the 13th Part 2? Yeah. That's where I'm going to start. I don't give a fuck about his mom. And, I don't care. And it's, yeah, and it's a little bit different, too, because you, you, it's the only movie where you get to see him run around with that fucking bag head on, and that shit's pretty creepy. Like, I know it's the town that dreaded sundown and all that, but, like, it's yeah. still pretty fucking creepy in its own right. The only uh, the only, the only, only movie that did that better, or I, or I think that, that did it justice, was the remake in 2009, yeah. at the very beginning with the the, the, uh, the fire scene, or where they're all, like, hanging out during the, uh, you know, the fire pit. Dude, what a good yeah, it, it, the, the, the bag head Jason is fucking scary. Yeah. 100% man and guys that's our fucking that's our tier layer there, there are other sequels we could have got to uh children of the corn 2 for me by the way would be pretty sexual i think children of the corn 2 is underrated as fuck but like uh there's there's other ones we could have got to but, but we I can always like add to this we can always like save yeah, this true. and add to it 
I'm going to click download right now and save this list. And then maybe we'll see uh, a hit us up on social and maybe we'll talk about it there. What other things we could add to it. I'll say this. It's been a while since we've done a night stream uh, on the main channel. We do the Patreon streams every month, but like this was fucking fun as shit. I and I remember, it. I remember why we switched to days for a little bit because my liver hurts, but mm -hmm. I will say this <laughs> I had a good fucking time. I had a great time. Yeah, man. Thank you guys for showing up and, 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 and your support and you guys are awesome. Uh, we thank you every time that you give uh, anything. So we really appreciate that. But yeah, man, um, I, I feel like we're going to, we're going to, uh, you know, the channel is always going to evolve. So it's probably going to have some day streams and some night streams involved. So it's, it's always going to be an adventure. So we really appreciate you guys uh, stepping up and, and, and being a part of that adventure. But uh, yeah, man, I, I feel like what the coolest thing about these kind of things, uh, these tiers is that just like the action movie thing that we did a few weeks ago, you can always add to it. We can always revisit this, keep the same fucking list, and just keep adding movies to it. Hell yeah. And we could also do a, a, a three, do a four. Could do a yeah, I mean, movies, like you know, it doesn't things, stop. Like... It doesn't stop. It don't stop in this fucking neighborhood. We party all night long. To the shin dig. John Coffey says, I'm going to win big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but as Jay said, thank you guys so much for taking the time to hang out with us tonight. Uh, Saturday night party with our friends. The fucking best. The fucking best. So good. So good, man. And by the way, uh, if you guys don't know, and if you guys can afford it, it's totally up to you. We're not. If you can't, it's five dollars for Patreon. Uh, you guys get to. We have a really cool time at the end of the month. During a Patreon live stream, we get that's, to just that's hang the ten dollar tier and up. By the way, the the that 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 one is in the ten dollar and up tier. Oh, uh, well, Mike's an expensive bastard. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but well, just to be clear, but yeah. well, all right, it's so the ten dollars. Either way, but if you guys want to, at five dollars, they get to they they get to access the the uh, the commentaries, all the extra videos, all the commentaries, right. name in the card. <clears throat> and, and I'm gonna tell you guys what, you guys are missing out if you guys aren't watching those commentaries or listening to those commentaries at five dollars man you're getting a fucking goddamn roast beef sandwich from arby's and they got the meats <laughs> uh it's some good shit man we we like we have a good goddamn time on those commentaries uh and it's only five dollars uh, and at ten dollars if you guys can afford that i know it's a little extra but those are well, patreon live streams man let me tell you what we get sexual as fuck we get to know each other we get to have a good goddamn time we get there's mm -hmm. some crying sometimes that happens Sometimes it, it don't happen, but I mean, there's some sing song going on. There's like just whatever, man. We do beer chugs, and it, yeah. Here's the thing too, like uh, the thing about the the live stream tier is that not only do you get the monthly live streams, but you get every live stream that we've ever done for the past fucking like six, like seven years we've been on Patreon. Yeah. So there's like fucking I don't know, like fifty fucking streams. Uh, well, I mean, I, I think it's a good go deal because you can like. You can sign up for like 10 bucks, and if it's not your cup of tea, you can leave, but you can have access yeah. to all that time while you're there and check That's it out. Right. If it's not your thing, it's not your thing. But hey, man, thank you guys for. I mean, I, I'm not trying to sell you guys like a fucking pillow from mypillow.com. <laughs> My pillow. And by the way, the election was wrapped. <laughs> I, I I've seen a lot of people like selling mypillow.com and don't get me wrong, me and Mike are whores. So if they like offered us some money, <laughs> who the fuck knows? But hey, man, thank this you guys for pillow is so soft. Yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> yeah. When you lay your head on that, you're like, I hate black people. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I don't know. I, I, no. that's a, I don't. Know. It's a joke. But hey, man, thank you guys for joining us and hanging out with us tonight. It was really fun. Uh, it been a while for me. It was kind of nervous, so thank you guys for making me feel comfortable tonight. It was awesome, and uh, we'll see you next time, whatever that's going to be. Probably next week. It's going to be next yeah. week. Sounds about right. Probably maybe, Tuesday, maybe the, month of April. Maybe the month of April we'll do night streams. Maybe do some day streams. Yeah, time. yeah, that's fine. Know. Maybe we'll just make it a fucking different month. Like, uh, like on yeah. one month we'll do nights, and then the next month we'll do days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like dropping your kids yeah. off for the weekend. I'll get you them one know. week. Surprise you fingers in the butt happen yeah. all the time. Who knows what happens? Could happen. Could happen. Fun times, hey, guys. We love your fucking faces, guys. Thanks for hanging with us. I had a blast. Everyone really knows fun, you had man. a blast, Frank. The whole town knows you had a blast. You, honey, do you think KFC <laughs> is still open? <laughs> I think you're so, that's some good shit right there. <laughs> anyway, yeah, see you guys. Thank you guys. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>